wide res- blocking by the wide receiver. I'll get yeah. it out. Don't worry about me. You had one guy <laughs> in the back that had him around the waist, but he slid right down. Yeah. And then you had one other guy making an arm yeah. attempt at him. And, you know, that's it. So Boyce is going to hold. And the extra point by Dexter is up and good. I mentioned that uh, Cawley was uh, going to be the starting quarterback, but I saw Dexter taking throws in yeah. warm-ups. And Dexter actually was the starter uh, in that series, handing the ball off to Boyce. And so that, that play took all of uh, 15 seconds, one play, yeah. 15 seconds. It went 58 yards, and Parkersburg Catholic has tied this game in a hurry at seven apiece. Yeah, and, you know, Coach Benninger for – Parkersburg Catholic, that's exactly what he wanted to see. Yeah. I mean, when you let a team come down first at opening drive, they score on you, you've got to come back with an answer. Mm-hmm. You dig yourself into that 14 nothing hole, throws your entire game plan uh, into the trash, and then you end up having to work from behind. Well, and there's not a better answer than Jeb Boyce, right? Yeah. I mean, he's, he's a senior. He's got that experience. Uh, 5'10", 175 pounds. He is everything to this football team and uh, has, has, has really been the, the catalyst for their two victories. Um, so far this year. So, you know, I was listening to uh, Mike Cameron, uh, who does the play-by-play on uh, 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 for Parkersburg Catholic, mm-hmm. and uh, heard him on with Fred Persinger at high school game night a couple of weeks ago, and he said it was just a steady diet of boys all night long is what is what helped them to uh, to um, uh, beat uh, Work County because it was just. Uh, I mean, it was boys to the left, boys to the right, boys up the middle all night long. Well, you ride that horse till it stops running. Yeah. And as long as it keeps running, you keep going with it. Nobody wanting to kick it deep here this afternoon, apparently, as uh, Garrett Butler will fall on it at the 38. So, real good field position again for the Titans. You know, I don't know if the teams aren't confident in their (laughs) coverage skills on uh, the on special teams, but uh, yeah. yeah, that's one thing. You know, if you're if you're willing to give them, you know, to the 35, 40 yard line, just squib it and go from there mm-hmm. instead of giving up a long return. Yeah. So first and ten, they will mark it at the 39 yard line. So first and ten for the Titans. Shotgun formation, two sidecars. Now they'll send one in motion. That's Face Meyer. And the quarterback Hamrick. Keeps it himself, and really no gain on the play. Ron, as he stays at the 39. So. Yeah, it looked like uh, they were running the option to the left with uh, Kyle Moss in the backfield. Uh, Hammer keeps it over the left side with no running room at all. You know what I like to see? We were talking about numbers. I like to see seven or eight guys in uniform on Catholic sideline. That's a good sign yes. for Coach Benninger, you know, um, as you mentioned about equal numbers. But, you know, there uh, there was a time when, you know, we didn't know if Catholic was going to have enough to field a football team here a year or two ago. And Coach Benninger has come in and done a fantastic job with the Crusaders. And, and uh, you know, they're on their way to uh, – they're on their way to a good season. Pass intended for Avery Chapman. He was wide open. He just couldn't bring it in. It hit him in the hands. Yeah, again, a mix-up in the secondary for Parkersburg Catholic. And they get away with this one because it's dropped. Nice job by Hamrick. And, again – the wide out is beyond the coverage. You can see five yards behind him are a couple of Catholic uh, defenders. But uh, Yeah, he was – I mean, I don't know if, if he was distracted or if he was just thinking, you know, uh, nothing but green in front of him and he just lost concentration. But that's a ball that has to be caught. Yeah. Clock stops on the incompletion, 8.57 to go in the first quarter. 7-all is our score. Catholic and the Gilmer County Titans. Face Meyer in motion again. Now Hamrick with the snap. Over the middle, wide open, and in and out of the hands of Levi Self. And he should have had it. He knows it. Boy, he should have. And again, Ian Hamrick is right on the money with his passing. He is really looking good, sophomore quarterback. Well, Puts he's got it right time. on the money. And yeah, again, he's got time to throw the ball, too. Yeah. He's got time to throw the ball. And the secondary for Parksburg Catholic is playing soft. His receivers have. Uh, been open that time Ethan Lang was in coverage he was closer than they have been (laughs) last two pass plays but uh, should have been a completion shot of Thomas Coger there the head coach for the Titans not real happy with his wide receiver punt takes a Catholic bounce from John Harper and Gilmer is going to knock it dead at the 48 yard line or Parkersburg yeah Gilmer will knock it dead at the 48 yard line 
when you're going in the direction Gilmer is right now, as you look at the screen, they're going from left to right. You can't punt the ball high right. because there's a pretty good breeze blowing in that direction. How come it's not direction. hitting us? We, you know, I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> We're not getting much of a breeze. It's it's a little bit of a breeze. But, uh, yeah, that the wind is just going to hold that ball up in the air. Hey, you know, Ron, every family has a box of old home videotapes sitting around, but how many even have a VHS or cassette player anymore? Not me. Marietta Media Transfer can help you access those precious memories, preserve them in a digital format. October specials, $10 per transfer when you have five or more tapes, films, or DVDs to transfer. Call them, 488-4633, or check out MariettaMediaTransfer.com for more information. Big run by Boyce over the left side as he breaks into Gilmer County territory, gets down to the 30-yard line. So a 22-yard pickup. This time they go to the left side and, and watch Boyce right there breaks another two arm tackles and then makes a nice move to get to the outside, breaking that tackle, has the pursuit catch up to him from behind. But Man, if you're going to use arms to bring this kid down, no. you're not going to have a very good day. No, it's not going to work, and you're going to have bruises all over your arms. <laughs> Dexter under center. Big backfield and a handoff to Jalen Bruni. Bruni over the right side inside the 20. Brought down at the 17 and a half yard line. Bruni, good size fullback, 6'2", 210. Getting his first carry. They just run a trap up the middle and you can see a lot of running room there for Parkersburg Catholic. The uh, offensive line is executing well for the Crusaders. Yeah. Clock continues to tick here at 8.05 to go in the first. Seven all our score, but Parkersburg Catholic in the red zone for the second straight time. Well, the first time really didn't count. They were one play and in. Now they give it to a late delayed handoff to Boyce over the left side. He's got the angle. Boyce is going to be marked out at the five-yard line. Well, he just got around the corner trying to keep his balance and stay in bounds, and he couldn't do it. It's going to be a first and goal situation for the Crusaders, but Boy, nice seal block there by uh, Bruni to get him to the outside. You can see right there his foot hit the sideline. Yep. Great call by the, the side judge there. Great call. So the clock stops 7.49 to go in the first. Parkersburg Catholic at the five-yard line, knocking on the door. Offset formation, and they give it to Bruni right up the middle. Bruni, nice job by that interior line for yeah. the Titans. They stuffed him at the five, and that's all he got. Couldn't tell. If it looked kind of like a mix-up on the play. It looked like yeah. uh, Dexter wanted to pitch the ball, and he ended up handing off, you know, going up over right ta or right guard. Mm -hmm. But uh, Gilmer was right there waiting on him. So uh, third and goal now, or second and goal from five. Second and goal. Eye formation. Bruni and Boyce dots the eye. They give it to Bruni again and again. He has stood up over that right side, and Gilmer doing a nice job, Ron, preventing the big yep. man from getting anywhere. Got their backs up against the wall and uh, playing some good goal line defense. Watch right here on the replay. Just a good job, that, uh, linebacker Ian Hamrick. Also, the quarterback cutting in from the outside and yeah. slowing, uh, getting hold of the leg and slowing up Bruni. He did pick up two, so it's third and goal from the three. Now Boyce taking the direct snap, and he's going to go right up the middle. And Jeb Boyce from three yards out scores and puts Parkersburg Catholic on top for the moment, 13-7. to seven. So they finally... Go to their money back, and he takes it into the end zone. Real simple, uh, just direct snap. Yeah. Is that Six, what you call the Wildcat? Wildcat, yeah. yeah. It's the Wildcat. 6.29 to go in the first quarter. And uh, doesn't look like right now, Brian, we're going to have a defensive struggle on our hands. <laughs> I mean, you just look, if, if Gilmer had completed those two oh, passes, yeah. well, the first one, it would probably would have been a touchdown. Yeah. Extra point from Clayton Dexter is up and good. So 6.29 to go, Parkersburg Catholic, two possessions. Parkersburg Catholic, two touchdowns. Yeah, offenses look good. Jake Boyce doing a good job. Jeb Boyce, excuse me. Yeah. Heck of a baseball player, too, by the way. I didn't know if you knew that. Didn't know that. 
Look on the replay. Just do, doing a good job shrugging off. You're not going to bring him down with an arm tackle. We can see that already in the first two series right. they've had. The, uh, you know, one of the few Saturday games. There may be one more, uh, one or two more Saturday games here. I think there's two today in the state of West Virginia today. Uh, most of them played last night. A lot of uh, a lot of games here locally were uh, homecoming games, Ron. And um, I think everybody around here won their homecoming games last night. Mm -hmm. um, you look at, uh, you know, Parkersburg won their game. Parkersburg South, uh, Parkersburg South had a great year this year. <laughs> that offense, they they really showed uh, they can run, they can throw. The quarterback for Parkersburg South is amazing. Yeah, boy, how about Capital Cabell Midland? That went right down to the wire, twenty six twenty one, and Cabell Midland goes to five and zero oh this year. Um, elsewhere in AAA South, as we mentioned, over John Marshall last night, fifty six to fourteen. Uh, for the Patriots' homecoming. Wheeling Park squeaked one out over previously undefeated Zanesville, Ohio, 35-34. Huntington squeaked by South Charleston, 52-50. There's a game you don't imagine is going to be that close. Huntington comes in 3-0 yeah. against a South Charleston team that is 1-3, and, yeah. and it's a 52-50 shootout. <laughs> that is definitely a shootout. Yeah. Then we mentioned Parkersburg. Beating the Tigers of Marietta High School last night for Parkersburg's homecoming, 42-21. to 21 is Kick is taken short at the 46-yard line. Jagger Fur on the recovery there from the kickoff. Jagger, I love that. You know, I saw, I was watching ESPN's game day today. You know, they were out in Nebraska. Uh -huh. And there's a kid that they were featuring. You know what his name is? Bumper Pool. Yes. I heard that. I, I was listening on the radio. Yeah. I didn't see it, but I was listening so, on the radio. I can't remember if he plays for <laughs> Arkansas or some place like that, but he's yeah. The name Pool Bumper yeah. Pool. Do you thank your parents or <laughs> do you hate your parents for that you one? Know, I, <laughs> listen, I don't know because everybody knows who he is now. Well, maybe that was the idea. Hammer's going to keep it himself over the right side and. He'll score it out across the 45, 46-yard so we, line. We've seen him run that play twice. He's got Kyle Moss, junior running back, uh, as his pitch man. And I think Hammer both times has made a mistake. Good job right there by uh, Bruni to Staying fake. Home. Yeah, fake like he's going to go. And as soon as he does that little hop step to the uh, running back, he comes back into the quarterback. Yeah, and the thing that impressed me about that is, is Bruni's not a small dude. He's 210, 6'2", so he was able to stay with the yeah. – uh, the smaller, quickier, quicker, quicker, <laughs> Hamrick. Yeah. Second and eight. Man in motion is Facemeyer. They've run this formation a lot today so far. Hamrick, straight drop over the middle. Wide open again. And again, Levi Self cannot hang on to it. And it was in both hands. And you know the gloves they've got now. They're like glue. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So it, it used to be, they say, anything that hits your fingertips on both hands, you should be able to catch. Mm -hmm. You've got those gloves on now, especially. Right. It, it, that's, uh, that's three. The last three passes he's thrown have hit the receiver in the hands. And the receivers and, have been open every time. Yeah, and been dropped. You know, I'm wondering if Xavier Colley is hurt because he is the only kid on the Parkersburg Catholic sideline, number one, that is uh, without a helmet on. Yeah. He's in uniform, but he does not have a helmet on. Now, he's normally the starting quarterback. Uh, but he is uh, he's just standing there on the sideline about the 47-yard uh, line at the line of scrimmage. And uh, pass is uh, going to be overshot, intended for Levi Self, and Hamrick took a shot. Man. Yeah. Bruni came in off the corner, defensive end, unblocked. Uh, mistake by your left tackle. He's The defensive end, he, he's the guy you've got to block. Yeah. And uh, – but yeah. the right tackle, and uh, yeah, Bruni came in untouched. Anyway, get back to Collie. He's you know he's now Robert making his way down to the uh, to the uh, forty three yard line. But he's uh, yeah. no helmet, hands on his hips. I don't know if he's hurt, if he's got the flu, if the heat's bothering him or what. But there's been a lot of Collies play for Parkersburg Catholic. Somebody got a hand on that, I believe, and uh, it's going to roll out of bounds at the forty yard line. But yeah, we were talking before the game. When you look at uh, rosters from Parkersburg Catholic and you look at rosters from, like, St. Mary's and places like that, yeah. there's a good look right there at Collie just kind of chilling. Um, you know, you're always going to find a Garvin at Parkersburg Catholic. 
Nine times out of ten, although this year when we were at Ritchie last week, I didn't see a Barnhart at St. Mary's, but yeah. there's always been a Barnhart. Uh, it's just the, the, the family lines that run in these small towns are unbelievable. Power eye backfield now for, I say power eye, strong eye backfield to give us the boys over the uh, right side. and He fights his way ahead for about five and a half. Nice job there by Jeb Boyce. Yeah, because he should have gone down five yards behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah. He was able to avoid that tackle. He gets tripped up at the line of scrimmage and ends up picking up five yards. So Clayton Dexter gets the play from Coach Lance Binniger. Comes in and he'll call the shots. Good look at the uh, Parkersburg Catholic cheerleaders here this afternoon. Second down and five for the Crusaders. Strong eye again. Boyce in the back of it, and they'll hand it off to him, and he is immediately in the background. Nice job there by Kyle Moss. Moss read that from the get-go, yes, Ron, and Boyce was dead to rights. Yeah, they ran the, the fake to Bruni, but watch on the replay. Moss has one person he's after, and that's number 10. Yep. And then does a good job of getting a hold of the leg, wrapping him up, and then taking him down. You suppose they're paying a little that's, bit of attention to him now? Yeah. You know, that's, that's one of the ones the coaches, when you run out of this stick-eye formation – uh, that's one in the in the uh, tape room where you are watching, and you see these different plays. And uh, I'll guarantee you on that assignment, Moss is your linebacker. Yeah, he was the wherever ten goes. If he doesn't even get the ball, you're gonna you're gonna go after number ten. And the thing about that stick eye, you know, the last guy that gives the quarterback a little bit of a decision as to what to do too, because yeah. he can see what's developing. And uh, Parkersburg Catholic timeout. wants to take a timeout. And um, so our, uh, our time on the clock, 3.47. We'll take a break as well to go in the first. 14-7 Catholic. We're coming right back. Any time, any place, any weather. Ramjack, a division of Moran Construction. What about your foundation? Ramjack, a division of Moran Construction. Are you looking for a family doctor but hate the idea of another overbooked office? At our practice, you get to see the same doctor at every visit, either online or at your home. You get exceptional medical care that's convenient for you. Call us today at Ascent Private Practice. Back at Stadium Field in Parkersburg, West Virginia, 14-7, to Parkersburg Catholic on top of Gilmer, and Ron has a medical update on uh, Xavier Colley for Parkersburg Catholic. He's got a leg injury from uh, last, the last uh, game. Um, he was injured and uh, hasn't healed, so the uh, Parkersburg Catholic coaching staff taking precautions okay. to make sure he's healthy you know, for the next game or if he has to sit out the next game. You know, I see uh, that but, now. He's kind of limping there a little bit yeah. on the sidelines, and I wasn't uh, – I wasn't clued into that, uh, wasn't paying very much attention, but now that I see him moving around a little bit, he is favoring that left leg. And there were five Collie brothers that have played for Parksburg Catholic. Holy moly. Boyce on the uh, Wildcat direct snap, and he's in trouble and stays on his feet, but will go down short of the 40-yard line, so he doesn't even get back to the original line of scrimmage. And for, for the first time today, Parkersburg Catholic in a punting situation should good, they choose to do that. Good job by Gilmer. They, they needed to get a stop here because they're down. They couldn't afford to go down 21-7. to mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, good job here, uh, especially on the previous play when they wrapped up Boyce for the big loss on the second down and five, moved them into a third and 11 situation. Justin Liu slowed him down, and Chris Carr finished him off. So Boyce will stand back at his 26 to receive the punt. Rugby style, and he gets off a good one. Kicking with the win. Yep. Levi Self lets it go. And maybe that was a mistake. He may have wanted a fair catch that because now they're cleared down at the 10-yard line. Not good field position when you're going into the win. No, it's not. You, basically, it, it's an easy uh, solve for Gilmer County. All they have to do is catch the ball. That's yep. all they've got to do, catch yep. the ball when it hits you in the hands. Yep, they've got guys that are open. Game of the Week is brought to you by Moran Construction. Moran Construction and Ramjack of West Virginia, your local foundation repair experts. Give our friends Jody Bonnett a call and her team at 
888-447-7473 or visit ramjack.com. So Gilmer County with 2.52 to go in the first will take over after the punt from Boyce. And they will try to get their offense moving. And as Ron said, just catch the ball, man. That's all we're asking you to do. And Hamrick is going to be hit for a loss back behind the line of scrimmage as Bruni got him. Yeah, Jagger Fur, the uh, right tackle, was just Beat. totally beaten on the corner. Yeah, yeah, he was. Uh, Bruni came around the corner. He got an arm on him. And that was about it. You know, and one of the things that I'll bet you Lance Benninger's telling his guys, look, if you are if you can't cover in the secondary line, I need you to pressure the quarterback. <laughs> and yeah. that's exactly what happened right there. Yeah. Hamrick had no chance whatsoever to throw that football or and, even get set. And, and, and as ineffective as the Gilmer game, uh, running game has been, those linemen are going to, you know, they're going to start playing the pass first yep. and uh, trying to get in the backfield, beating their blocks up front. Yeah, and we haven't even talked about the heat too awful much today and the mugginess, but man alive. Hamrick will keep it himself and scored out to just shy of the five-yard line as well. They'll mark him down, so he's not even uh, back to the original line of scrimmage. They're yeah. still going to be third and a long 16. And we still have 145 to go in the first quarter. Yeah, all these passes have yeah. really slowed things down here in the first quarter. We've been uh, 30 minutes already, and uh, we're not even done with uh, the first uh, first period. Although the clock is running now at uh, inside 130. And Gilmer's got to be careful. The last few times he's dropped back to pass, he's been under pressure. going to run the Hammer's option. Hamrick's just looking for a hole to score it through, and he finally does get out over the 10-yard line to the 13, but he's yeah. lost two more. Yeah. He's uh, – well, he ended up – he gained about seven on that carry because the ball was at the five-yard line. Oh, that's it'll be, right. It'll be fourth right. down and seven now. And you look, just good pursuit of uh, the Catholic defense, linebackers, defensive backs, getting to the outside and not giving them that corner. Mm -hmm. And Gilmer's going to have to punt in the wind, so it looks like Parkersburg Catholic is going to come up with pretty good field position. And watching John Harper in warm-ups, he's, he's not got the, the strongest leg in the world, so if this thing goes straight up in the air, Parkersburg Catholic – We'll have great field position, although Harper does a pretty good job and gets it, and Boyce will take it at the 41. Boyce turns the corner at the 30, still on his feet at the 20. Jeb Boyce dipping, diving, dancing. He might go all the way, Ron, and he does. Jeb Boyce, 41-yard touchdown reception, or return, rather, on the punt, and he just did it all. That was just a great job, great field vision by Boyce. You could almost tell as soon as he got that ball, he wanted to go to the wide side of the field yep. because when you looked out, there was nobody coming that way for Gilmer. And once he got to the outside and turned that corner, he had one guy to beat. Uh, if you watch here on the replay, when he takes in the ball, he'll have one Gilmer player he steps inside of. Now when he gets to the corner here, right there, number 62, Alex Conrad, he gets around him, and now he's just going to – Work his way up the sideline. At this point, he's, he's just putting moves yeah, on people. He does a great job. He's got quick feet. Yep. And the extra point is barely up and good by Clayton Dexter. So, well, that took a few seconds off the clock anyway. Yeah. And, you know, it was right after Gilmer came up with the stop against Parkersburg Catholic and got the ball back. And then the good punt by Catholic that put Gilmer way back into their end of the field forcing them to punt again, and now they are in that 21-7 hole. Hey, you know what, folks? It's relevant. It's informative. It's a whole lot of Eric Little. Catch the Eric Little High School Football Podcast. Subscribe on iTunes and get new episodes delivered each Wednesday. Like and interact with the show on Facebook at the Eric Little High School Football Podcast. I still can't believe that kid has a podcast. <laughs> I mean, it just blows my ever-loving mind. He's not a kid anymore. I know. <laughs> When you get old, when we were talking about how old you are, how old I am today, when you get our age, everybody's a kid. That you know, yeah. These young whippersnappers coming up nowadays. <laughs> get off my lawn. <laughs> yeah, these guys like uh, Little and Craig Dutton, uh, the kid we yeah. met out at Tyler our yeah. first week, and you know, all these little young whippersnappers coming up, taking our jobs away yeah, from us. They do a good job too. I'll have to give him. Speaking of good job, Jeb Boyce right there, man. He's uh, not a dry stitch on him at the moment. <laughs> Workhorse this afternoon. 
So I wonder if it's hot, uh, as hot as it is, if they are going to give them some hydration breaks here to... You know, that's interesting because they did stop earlier on. I, I'm not sure if it was a timeout or if it was a water break. Uh, but, you know, nowadays they are the officials are mandated to do that in, in extreme conditions yeah. uh, for safety reasons. You know, when we, uh, you know, we, when we uh, train our umpires and, and, and teach the new classes, you know, it's always about safety first. You know, uh, one of the greatest umpire instructors I've had uh, in my uh, nine plus years doing it is a guy named Jerry Walker and Jerry's all about safety right I mean he's uh, whether it be uh, making sure the kids aren't wearing jewelry or they're getting plenty of uh, hydration and, and all that kind of stuff safety first always and so that's uh, that's what these yeah. officials have been trained to do nowadays right you can only imagine how hot it is down right, there on the field you know in the so heat the uh, and the that turf sunlight the turf sucks in the heat yeah and that uh, that hit uh, Garrett Butler, and Facemeyer uh, picks it up at the 30 and advances it ahead to the 42. Good job by Facemeyer coming up and making a play on that ball because it did. It went off the helmet of yep. Garrett Butler. So Gilmer really in need of an answer right here mm -hmm. as we are almost done with the fourth, first quarter fourth quarter <laughs> we couldn't be that lucky this as hot as it is to be uh, that far deep into the ball game here this afternoon 15.1 to go and uh, so far I mean after 7-7 it's been all Parkersburg Castle yeah. and we did get the play clock working now so 14 seconds on the uh, on the play clock so we'll take a uh, timeout on the field I believe well why are they taking a timeout with 15 seconds left because somebody didn't know what they were doing, yeah. apparently. I'm guessing. <laughs> yeah. Next week, now I'm, I've got to be off next week, but uh, you're going to take the reins, right? Yeah, I'll be here. And you're in Ravenswood. Yeah, well, I won't be here. I'll no. be in Ravenswood. Yeah. Ravenswood, Ritchie County. Yeah. Um, second time you'll get to see the uh, Rebels this year. Um, Rebels in Doddridge County had a really, really good ball game Thursday night. Yeah. Out at Doddridge's uh, new stadium out there off Route 50. And, um, you know, Dodgers, I think, Ron, and you talked about this, I think the difference in that game, Dodgers got, got out to a little bit of a head start. Yeah. And it was kind of hard for Richie to claw their way back into it. Yeah. You know, it, it's one of those things where Richie County has been down for so long, they almost had a losing mentality. Last couple of years with Coach Hot, they made it to the playoffs last year. I think they were six and four, and then this year they are learning how to win. Yep. Um, Doddridge has already been there the last couple of years with uh, Hunter America. Right. So you know they dug themselves a hole they couldn't get out of, but uh, it's with good coaching that'll be a learning experience for them. You know, not next year, but this year. Right. You know, when they get into games like that. Um, so yeah, they're going to have a tough game next week against uh, Ravenswood. And uh, right now with one loss, uh, you know, if they would happen to win out or at least maybe only two losses, they could get a home playoff game. Yeah, and this single-A division is uh, is a tough division. You know, after you look at Wheeling Central and Williamstown and, and uh, Justin Liu, uh, I believe the ball yeah. carrier there. Yes, he was, number two. And, uh, you know, so you look at a really, really stacked Class A division. Yeah. Uh, you got to win as many games as possible. Yeah. That's the end of the first quarter with our score. Parkersburg Catholic 21, Gilmer County 7. We'll take a break, and we'll come back right after this, 1455 Media. Any time, any place, any weather. Ramjack, a division of Moran Construction. What about your foundation? Ramjack, a division of Moran Construction. You're watching the Moran Construction Game of the Week on 1455 Sports. Brought to you in part by West Banco. By all accounts, better. Visit them today at westbanco.com. Marietta College, bring forth a pioneer. Visit marietta.edu. And by the law offices of David A. Sims, contact them at mywvlawyer.com. 
mentioned Marietta College there in the rejoin. Uh, Marietta off this weekend uh, after their first home victory last week. And then next week they're on the road. Next time Marietta plays will be Saturday the 12th. Uh, it'll be homecoming. And that is a 2 p.m. kickoff at Don Drum in Marietta. And um, Let's hope it's not. Uh, it's cooled down a little yeah. bit by then. They, uh, they are honoring the 1969 Pioneer football team, the only team in the history of Marietta College to have eight wins. Yeah. And they are honoring that team uh, during the homecoming I festivities. I believe they were eight and one, weren't they? Yep. They only played nine games That's that year. right. That's right. That's a long time, 50 years ago. Got that little tidbit of information from Jeff Shally, the best SID in the world. <laughs> Talked to him yesterday. Uh, so, yeah, Marietta College back home on the 12th of October, two weeks from today. So we get ready to start the second quarter, long first quarter. Took uh, 40 minutes to play that first quarter. A lot of passes, a lot of drops, and um, some timeouts. Each team with two left. So now Gilmer will start the second quarter. Hamrick will hand it off to Lou, and Lou scoots ahead to about the 48, and he picks up a yard. That's it. It'll be third down. Dexter coming in from uh, coming in to make the uh, tackle after a gain of maybe a yard, and that was really the last play of the first quarter was Lou's first carry, and that was really the first good running play that uh, Gilmer had had. Put him yeah. in a nice second and five situation, and yep. then. That play, they only got a yard. Officials have it marked third and five. So Hamrick in the shotgun with a sidecar and a caboose. And uh, Lou is the caboose, and Hamrick keeps it. Now, depending on where they mark this, Ron, I think they're going to give him the first down. I think he did pick up enough for a first down. We yet to see Hamrick pitch the ball. It looks like his his pitch man is open yeah. on every time they've run that play, but he has yet to pitch the ball. Watch on the replay right here. You can see Lou's on his hip. He's not even looking at his guy. Yeah. And now, if he had to give him credit, had he pitched that ball, uh, I believe Eli Gardner would have gone straight to, to the ball carrier because he got kind of fooled and turned back in on Hamrick. Now, Hamrick, and I'm being totally serious, has the best hair award today. <laughs> he, uh, I love that. And there's the pitch, Ron, to Lou on the left side. And Justin Lou, the sophomore, down to the 40. So a nice gain right there. But, uh, you know, Hamrick reminds me of the Clemson quarterback, right? Yeah. With that, with that hair. He got looks, those locks flowing yep. out from underneath the helmet. Looks really good. Watch on the replay right here. It does does a good job just getting it out to Lou because he was under the gun right there. Defensive end had cracked in for Parkersburg Catholic. I believe that was Gill who had come in. And uh, if Hamrick doesn't get rid of that ball, he's going to have about a three-yard loss on his hands. But uh, picks up seven on that carry. be second down and seven – or second down three for – the Titans. Hammer gets the play from Coach Thomas Coger, and he'll set up in the shotgun at the 45. Hammer wants to pitch again, but no, he tucks it and keeps it. And he had Lou on the outside, yeah. Ron. Yeah, I, you know, I don't, I don't know if he's misreading what uh, Bruni is doing on defensive end, but usually your defensive end, when you run the option, your defensive end has the inside read, which would be the quarterback. Right. And your outside linebacker or, cor or cornerback will have the pitch man. And we've seen that play run, what, half a dozen times? Mm -hmm. He's pitched once, but that time, it, it, had Lou got the ball, who knows how much he would have gained. Yeah. But I can't tell if Bruni's giving him a look like he's going to the outside to make him keep the ball. But uh, coaching staff has to make him aware to get rid of that ball on the pitch. Third and a yard, and they give it to Lou. And... Lou is going to be short of the first down. He needed to get to the 37, Ron, and he got stood up at the 38. That's one of those plays when you're going up the middle, they'll leave the defensive end unblocked. And you can see right there, when Lou gets the ball, he's got to have a full head of steam because he's got to beat the defensive end coming around the corner. You leave him unblocked and your tackle goes in and picks up one of the linebackers. But uh, Lou was a little cautious getting to the line, yeah. and Bruni came in and made the tackle. Uh, Jalen Bruni's had a nice game here yep. on defense for the Crusaders. Yep. So uh, Thomas Coger decides he wants to go for it here, and I don't blame him. Fourth and one. And they'll get the first down. But again, it was the same play. They were going up the middle, and Bruni came in and cracked down. 
and Hamrick was tentative getting to the line. You got as soon as he gets that snap, he's full head of steam. You've got to pick up that yard. That's all you've got to get. One yard. They're going to measure now. Yeah. They're uh, they're marking him. It looks watch like on the replay. As soon as he got that, he should have gone helmet right into the back of one of his players and started pushing forward. Mm -hmm. And uh, Bruni, if he did come up with the tackle, it stopped him. That's two good plays in a row from the defensive end. So they will uh, chain game will come out and measure here for the first time this afternoon. Line to gain is the thirty seven, and. Uh, they're going to be short. They are going to be short by about the nose of the football. First down, Parkersburg Catholic. Great, two great plays on third and short and fourth and short by Jalen Bruni, senior defensive end, coming in making two great plays, showing his quickness, getting off of that corner and coming in and making the plays. But also you got to lay some responsibility on two ball carriers for Gilmer yep. for not sticking their nose in there as soon as they got the ball and picking up. Yeah, and it's not like Gilmer has a huge guy that they can, you know, run in that yeah. situation. Um, you know, like a 220-pound fullback or something like that. I mean, their their biggest skill player is, is uh, you know, maybe the 170s, 180s. Yeah. Yeah, that definitely makes a difference. But th that's where you rely on your speed instead of your size. So Clayton Dexter under center, I formation with Bruni and Boyce. And they give it to Jeff Boyce. And Boyce breaks the first tackle, but a nice job by Justin Liu wrapping him up at the 37-yard line, 36 and a half. So it'll be second and about 10. They didn't really get anything there. Kyle Moss, number 15 for Gilmer, he is probably the spy. Wherever number 10 goes in blue, number 15 in white is going to follow. Yeah. That time he didn't make the tackle, but uh, he disrupted the play, <coughs> which enabled uh, the tackle behind the line of scrimmage for Gilmer. Clock continuing to run now. We are at eight minutes in the first half. This one moving a little faster than the first Boys quarter did. Direct snap to Jeb Boyce on that Wildcat, and Boyce around the left side, down, down to the 40, inside the 35. Brought down by Chapman. Down to the 33-yard line. Big-time gain from Jeb Boyce as he goes 20 yards. You can see they run the option right there. Defensive back's going out to Bruni on the wing, and that's just a signal for Boyce to keep the ball. And head up field, and he does a great job doing that. Takes it all the way down to the 33-yard line of Gilmer County. 26 yards on the carry. So Gilmer had kept Boyce in check for a few plays, but uh, he finally breaks a big one there out of the Wildcat. That strong eye stick Bruni eye formation, there. and Bruni is the second man through. He gets the carry. Now that's the way you're supposed to hit the hole right there. Yep. Bruni got the ball. Head of steam, straight through it. Watch on the replay right here. There's no hesitation looking for – the only hesitation there was is when he cut back to the inside, but that's really not a hesitation. That's just a change of direction. Right. But he picks up four yards on that play. Be second down and six. 21 to seven is our score. Catholic Crusaders over the Titans of Gilmer County. Who made that trip across Route 5 today and Route 47? Man, that is a trip. I'll tell you. Yes, it is. Umpired many a baseball game out at uh, that facility out there. And I'm going to tell you what, next to Power Park in Charleston, yeah. that Gilmer County facility is the nicest in the state as far as baseball goes. Never seen it. Oh. I'll take your word for it. Oh, I mean, you know, you've seen what Mountaineer Field looks like, right? Yeah. That synthetic all the way, yeah. even the, even the, uh, the uh, base areas are, are that brown synthetic turf. Mm -hmm. That's the way Gilmer County is. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is absolutely gorgeous, Ron. I mean, if you ever get the chance to see a baseball game there, uh, worth the drive, actually, because uh, it's really, really nice. Third and two now. Ball is at the 25-yard line. 
And they give it to Bruni, Bruni again, second man. And again, nice job. You mentioned that earlier. That's the way you hit the hole, right? Yeah. I mean, that's the way yeah. you uh, get that first down when you're third and two. Yeah, that play's not drawn up to pick up, you know, 15 yards. That play's designed to pick up two yards in a first down. That's yeah. what you want. You know, it, if it breaks open, you get a touchdown out of it, fine. Mm -hmm. But the goal of that play is to pick up whatever you need for the first down. It's, yep. you know, short yardage play. Just a dive over the left tackle. There's all it was. Yep. And... Uh, so Parkersburg Catholic continues to move in good field position now, just outside the red zone. Their ball is uh, marked at the 21-yard line, first and 10. Both teams, two timeouts remaining here in this fast-moving second quarter. Direct snap to Jeb Boyce. Boyce inside the 15-yard line. He'll get down to the 13, and a nice pickup there of seven on the play for Jeb Boyce. Yeah, that's just that's good blocking up front, and you can see him again breaking a couple of arm tackles mm -hmm. and uh, following his blocking right up the middle. Got a timeout on the field. Yeah, Parkersburg Catholic is going to take one with 5:23 to go here in the uh, in the second, and we'll take a break as well. We'll be back, Brian and Ron on 1455 Media. Sir Speedy, the one-stop shop for all your printing, signage, and marketing needs. Sir Speedy's print, sign, and marketing services have you covered, whether it's banners, business cards, building signs, trade show displays, yard signs, promotional products, and so much more. With our state-of-the-art equipment, no job is too big or too small. And with Sir Speedy's online services, you can request a quote, send files, and place orders right from your desktop. Sir Speedy's got you covered. Visit us on Emerson Avenue or SirSpeedyWV.com. Merida College, it holds its students to such a high standard where it becomes the norm that you have to work hard. And he actually signed me up for uh, the hardest math competition for any undergraduates in, uh, in the United States. I'm glad that he saw that in me. And this is the place that makes me feel like myself. Hey, you know what? You always score big with a loan from West Bank O Bank, personal or business. We have loans for every possible need. Auto loan, touchdown. Personal injury, uh, personal loan, touchdown. <laughs> Flex line home equity loan, touchdown. So for that big win, stop by one of our Parkersburg locations or our Marietta location today. West Bank O wishes the area football teams good luck this season. Go teams! West Bank O Bank Incorporated is a member FDIC and an equal housing lender. So second and one for Parkersburg Catholic over the middle. Nice pass and a touchdown. Boys pass can pass complete. the ball too. Yeah, <laughs> touchdown pass complete to Ethan Lang. And that's a that's a great play drawn up by Parkersburg Catholic, the coaching staff. Because you wildcat, you think Boyce, yep. he's just going to run the ball. Well, watch him he take takes the draw. Yeah, he here. takes the step forward, which brings the linebacker in and opens your tight end up. Yep, there it is, wide open. It, it, he puts some zip on the ball before the safety could get over to cover it, and a nice, nice play call. call and touchdown for the Crusaders. Yeah, nice call by Lance Benninger there. Hats off, coach. So Boyce is going to hold bots ball spotted at the ten and. Uh, Kick is going to be uh, just not good. a little bit short. A little short, yeah. You know, um, we were talking about um, when you have games on a Saturday afternoon. It kind of—I um, don't know if it's a more relaxed atmosphere, yeah. but it's—it's—it certainly feels that way. So you get people that coming out to see games that you would normally see. Now, I just saw uh, a couple of fans come in in Warren T-shirts. Yeah. So, how about the year that Matt Kimes is having out at Warren? Yeah. I mean, doing really, really well. And I think they've lost one game, but um, uh, maybe two. I don't know. But but they're having a really good year. And, and, you know, Coach Kimes really doing a nice job out there turning things around for the yeah. Warriors. That's a program that needed turned around. Uh, spent a long time as an assistant at Parkersburg High School mm -hmm. and at Parkersburg South. And right. finally got his chance as head coach out at Warren. And, you know, that's a lot of a lot of. Uh, uh, Coaches may have turned that down because yeah. Warren struggled for many years sure have. in football, but it uh, looks like he's getting things turned around there. Yesterday's Antiques in downtown Ravenswood, West Virginia, is your one-stop shop for a variety of collectibles. The family-owned and operated store has a huge collection of Fenton and other art glasses, primitives, coins, and more. Stop by yesterday's Antiques Monday through Saturday, 10 to 5, Sunday, 
twelve to five. If you get there early enough next Friday, you might see Ron. Yeah. Because you know, fourteen fifty five media is in Ravenswood next week. You never know. And that ball hit it up, man. And uh it's gonna be taken by Avery Chapman. Yeah, if you're heading from Ritchie County down to Ravenswood, leave early. They close at five, so uh Make it a road trip, get down there, stop at yesterday's antiques in Ravenswood, and then head to the ball game. And, you know, these these antique and primitive stores in, in this state are yes. really second to none. I mean, I know you know that firsthand. You used to uh, co-own one, but, I, I mean, they um, they are really, really unique, and they have some great things at these little uh, knick-knack paddywhack shops. Yep. I mean, they're really, really cool. And so go see our friends in Ravenswood next week. Give you the opportunity before the ball game and check them out. One of the great things about the state of West Virginia, man. I mean, the beautiful, uh, the mountains and the rivers and, uh, you know, just all kinds of stuff to do in this state. Justin Liu on the pitch. Well, Hamrick finally decided to pitch yeah. one, and it's going to cost him about seven yards. Well, what happened is he got rid of the ball too soon. He didn't bring uh, Bruni to him. Uh, Wade Smiley actually uh, broke up the play in the backfield. He beat his block in, in big defensive tackle mm -hmm. and then Bruni went for the running back after that so I'm sure that was talked about by the coaches you need to get the ball to the pitch man and as soon as they do Smitely breaks the play up yeah <laughs> clock moving at 435 to go in the first half Parkersburg Catholic by 20 all over the Titans 27 to 7 right now Ian Hamrick over the middle wide open finally a ball downfield is caught for the Titans. Garrett Butler on the reception and a good first down play there. Well, that, that time uh, Ian Hamrick didn't put it in the hands. He put it right on the numbers yeah. to make sure it was going to be caught. But he's got a nice arm. I'm impressed with the sophomore quarterback for Gilmer. Yeah, some good zip right there. Gets down to the 34 from the uh, – or for uh, Gilmer into – Catholic territory. Titans really needed that. It was second down and 16. Nice first down. Ian Hammer, straight drop. He's going to get nailed. Yeah, he does, but he gets the pass off, and it is caught by Butler. But Hammer, slow to get up. Is anybody going to block Bruni? Well, if I'm they don't, asking. if they don't, their quarterback is going to get mauled. I mean, you saw that coming, you know, from a mile away. Yeah. I mean, you could you could hear the steps. Watch this here on the uh, replay. Here comes Bruni off that defensive end position, and Hamrick just gets clobbered. Jag Jagger Fur is supposed to be blocking. It's all that time on the replay. Bruni just beat him around the corner. Yeah. And uh, he's going to have to get out there and put a hand on him or slow him up somehow because he is really a defensive player of the yep. game right now for Parsburg Catholic. Yeah, he's struggling, is Fur. And Fur missed another block. Fur missed another block, and. I believe there's a turnover on the play. Yeah. Fun ball on the play, and I didn't see it, but I saw Coach Binniger on the sideline getting all excited, and pretty soon the official came in. Let's look at it. Lou gets the ball heading in the line, and you can see Smiley right there. Ball's out. Strips it out, and he's going to come away with it. Not too many guys on that field are going to steal the ball away from him. Yeah. So I was watching Fur. He had missed another block, and then – I was watching Moss hold as a result of the missed block <laughs> to try and, you know, help his uh, help his brother out, and uh, then Lou uh, coughs it up. So, Catholic will start first and ten from their twenty-eight. Pitch left side to Boyce. He's hit immediately. Squirms free. Goes around the corner, and he's off to the races. Jeb Boyce, nice open field, one-legged tackle there from Kyle Moss. Or Boyce is still running. Yeah. Chapman had a chance to get him in the backfield right here. And really, not too bad. He's got two arms wrapped around his waist somehow. He gets away from him, heads up sideline, and then Moss just barely gets him by the shoestring, brings him down, but not until after a big gain out to the 48-yard line. First and 10, Parkersburg Catholic. 48-yard line is the line of scrimmage. 42 of Gilmer's the line to gain. Boyce wants to throw, has a man, got to run under it, and he's got it. That was perfect. Nick <laughs> Stricker 
<laughs> he laid that ball up, and when he first threw it, it looked like it's going to be way over his head. And the, give the receiver a ton of credit. He just kept running and fell right into his arms. Yeah, beautiful. Watch it again. Boyce got an arm on him, and you can see right there, just perfect. Puts it, drops it right into his hands. Nice job by Stricker to keep running with the ball. Elijah Facemeyer saved the touchdown for the Titans first and goal at the six. And just like that, Catholic knocking on the door again. These Catholic uh, boys full of the big play today. Look at that backfield. Strong eye. And they give it to Bruni right up the middle. Fights across to the five-yard line, and they're going to mark him down at about the three and a half. Good job by the defense just boiling everything up inside. There was no hole to run through. Boyce got to the line of scrimmage, just lowered his head. Maybe picked up a yard on that play. Good looking running back right there. You know, Michael Blisk, the uh, radio play by play voice, was telling us he's just recently switched to running back. Yeah. He wasn't always there. Yeah, he used to be an offensive on lineman. Yeah, yeah. An offensive lineman. Yeah. So he's uh somebody saw something in him. I want I want that guy leading me uh, yeah. blocking through the hole. Got that right. <laughs> Pitch around the left side. Boyce into the end zone. No uh, no problems there. Boy, a lot of blue shirts out there lead blocking for Boyce, and then he cut it back up inside, was met at the goal line, but he's able to force his way into the end zone. And you can see right there he's got three guys out in front lead blocking, doing a great job. And well, I guess he said about the one. When you have Bruni out there, yeah. you know, you're and you're on the three yard line, you're you're pretty much golden. Marsburg Catholic extends their lead. Just 1.43 to go in the first half. And the kick is up and good this time by Clayton Dexter. Buck 43 to go in the first half. It's all Parkersburg Catholic. And, you know, that's uh, the Catholic kicking game is – you know, throwing a lineup and kick a 40-yard field goal. But he's been fairly accurate, all except for the last one, which he missed, hit the ball. It was short. But we've seen, like when we saw Ritchie County play, they don't have a kicking game. They have to go for two points after every touchdown. A lot of single-A teams, sometimes it's, you know, they don't have a kid on the on the field that can kick right. the extra points. So, But the Parkersburg Catholic kid, kicker, not, not a strong leg, but fairly accurate. He's a lot of, four or five t uh, this afternoon. A lot of times, Ron, you'll see in these uh, smaller school programs, you know, <laughs> you, kicker's probably the last thing you're worried about. Yeah. You want to you make sure you have a running back, quarterback, somebody can catch, and then somebody can block. Um, kicker's the last thing you're worried yeah. about. You know, you mentioned uh, earlier with the Parkersburg Catholic program and years past being able to field a team. Mm -hmm. I can remember uh, Danny Tennant was the coach, and they had – 11 players on the field and yep. one on the sideline. Yeah. And then there was, you know, three or four coaches on the sideline and a handful of injured players. But uh, I always just felt for that bad for that one guy. He's the one guy yeah. uh -huh. <laughs> not starting. And he may be the one guy saying, oh, gosh, please nobody get hurt. <laughs> you know. Could have been. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, seriously, hats off to, to guys like Danny and, and uh, Coach Benninger and stuff for being able to continually – put a product on the field that is competitive. Yeah. And, um, you yeah. know, just God love them. I mean, With they a are. 20, 25-man roster. Yeah. Or less. Yeah. I mean, Because, you know, not everybody's. Williamstown's got a pretty good-sized roster. Yeah, but, you know, even even nowadays, they're in the 30s. They're in the low 30s. And, um, you know, Avery Chapman with the uh, return across the 50 down to the 48-yard line. But, you know, even back in the day, um, you know, when, when my son played and, and the days of Shane Smith and, yeah. you know, Terry's son and, and, uh, and, and Ken, uh, Kevin Board and, and guys like that, you know, you were talking a 50, 55, 60-man roster for Williamstown in Class yeah. A. Now they've got 32, 33 kids. Yeah. So, but they're still very competitive. I mean, Terry, there, there's, no, there's no stopping that dude. Yeah. I mean, Terry Smith is just – he is uh, he and his staff, uh, and and by and large too, with the exception of a couple of guys that are retired, has had the same uh, coaching staff with him mm -hmm. for a long, long time. So they know what they're doing up there on yeah. Route 14. 
Let's see if Gilmer County can figure out what to do. As <laughs> passes launched downfield, and it was intended for that dude right there, Elijah Facemeyer. But again, Ron, on that right side, Jagger Fur gets yeah. beat. Yeah, look at him come around the corner and able to get the ball off. Hammer did that time. And a good job by Logan Ayers, defensive back. He was step for step with the receiver and didn't touch him, but kept him from getting back inside to the ball. The ball was thrown inside a little bit and uh, wasn't able. But they're going to have to do something with Bruni because he's coming around the corner untouched. And all he's doing, he's just lining up further outside yep. and running around the uh, right tackle for Gilmer. So Fur is 5'10", 190. He's a senior against Bruni as Hammer keeps it himself, and he's dancing and diving down to the 35-yard line, first down Gilmer. But, you know, you got Bruni, who is 6'2", 210, so definitely a mismatch in size there. Yeah. But I would think that Fur would be quick enough to get, to get outside and keep him. Uh, yeah. Now, you know, that time Bruni got turned out a little bit and then allowed Hammer to come back to the inside. Titans take a timeout right here with a buck twenty-one to go in the first. Yeah, that you know that is a big mismatch with Fur. You know he only goes one fifty-five, six foot, one hundred fifty-five. But yeah, but you got to. Right now he's getting beat not by a power move, but he's getting beat by quickness to the outside, which is you would expect a smaller guy to be quicker hey, to get to the outside. Hey, go back to that shot, Mitch. Can you go back to that shot with that kid on the side? Give me that Gatorade. Have that kid <laughs> bring that Gatorade, please. I'm begging you. I am begging. Oh. I'll, I'll, I'll bet you there's no way he's giving that up. No, I, I told would. you before the game. I brought two waters up. I know. I said, "Do you want another one?" You said, "No, I'm good with one." I've needed one since the end of the first quarter. Yeah. <laughs> I'm such Maybe a loser. next time you'll listen to me. I'm such a well. You can <laughs> bet your butt you know where I'm going at halftime. <laughs> right down to the old truck. Ladies and gentlemen, we do have a 50-50 winner. Be sure to tune back into 1455 Sports next Friday, another Moran Construction Game of the Week, as the Rebels from Ritchie County travel to Flynn Field to take on the Red Devils of Ravenswood. Kickoff at 7 with Ron Cook. And as always, you can watch for free at 1455media.com slash live or on Facebook. In high definition. Yeah, man. Nothing like it. Ian Hammert, and in and out of the hands of Clayton Dexter. And, you know, we were talking we're talking about this matchup, Bruni and Fur, and Bruni just picked Fur up and slammed him down to get, uh, you know, off the line of scrimmage. Yeah. I don't know if that play was designed that way, but you had two receivers crossing in the middle yeah. when the ball was thrown, and the linebackers are sitting on it. There was just, like, no – open window to get the ball in there. Mm -hmm. Clock stopped at 1.15 for the Titans. Ball at the 35-yard line, second and 10. 34-7 is our score. And nice completion and a first down to out face to mark. Elijah Faceman. Right. And I'm with you, man. You know what? I, I like the arm on that kid. Hammer's yeah. got a good arm on it. Yeah, he's only a sophomore, so if they could just get some blocking in an established running game, yeah, you know, that's going to open things up a lot more. Now that time, Fur did a really good job yeah. on, on Bruni on that outside. Yes, he did. He got in front of him, slowed and him up, didn't let there. him run around him, didn't let him run through him. Inside a minute, Hammer left side over – over the head of Elijah Facemeyer. He had him. He just overshot him. A little bit errant that time. We've seen Hamrick's been on the mark most of the game. Mm -hmm. We've got uh, Fur watch on the replay. Bruni's going to take his helmet off. I don't know if we'll have it on the replay. Yeah, you can see it come off right on the left side of your screen. Yeah, that was just over the hands of his intended receiver, Facemeyer. But yeah, Fur, <laughs> I don't know what Bruni, Bruni had a hold of his helmet and ripped it off his head. And uh, so he's got to go out for yeah, one play. Yeah, he's going to be out for that play. And usually, there's a you get an illegal hands of the face call on that one, but not this time. Second down and ten now for Gilmer County. Ball at the twenty. 
Ian Hamrick with the pitch. And he pitches it. That ball is a live ball, and it's picked up. Good thing by Kyle Moss. Moss to the 15. So, And we've got a Catholic player down and injured back at the 25-yard line. Yeah, I mean, He was off the mark on that pitch. You can see he's trying to get it out to Moss. And, uh, yeah, he's uh, got to do a better job than that because when your running back is looking more to pick the ball up than he is to run with it upfield, you're in big trouble. So I'm not sure who is down. I think it might be Ethan Lang for uh, Parkersburg Catholic. But uh, he is going to get – no, it's not Lang. It's uh, Andrew Gill. So I'm glad to see him up now. 1455 Sports is happy to announce they'll be broadcasting Marietta College Athletics. Tune in Saturday, October 12th, 2 o'clock, for the next home football game against Heidelberg. It's homecoming. Watch live or on demand anytime, anywhere, 1455media.com, or you can watch on Marietta College's athletic site, great site, pioneers.marietta.edu. Forty seconds to go in the first half. The clock is running, so Gilmer needs to. They need to be already ready to go. It wasn't dead ball where they don't. So now I think they're they're watching the play clock more than they are the game clock, and there's uh, eight seconds that separate those. But they need to get as many plays off as possible to get them into the uh, end zone here. Hamrick wide open, and he overshot his receiver. I mean, pass should have been caught. Hit Levi Self right in the hands for uh, the fourth or fifth time today. Yeah. But he was wide open. Yeah, he was. He made a nice move on the corner to get himself open, had the corner turned around. You watch, he was looking to go to the inside. Look at that. Selfish needs to keep running there. And he, he should have caught that one anyway, Brian. Yeah. It hit both of his hands. Yeah, he, he, he let up a little bit, and then he sped up, tried to get the ball. If he would have kept his stride and going, he would have caught the ball for a touchdown, would've much hit. like we saw Parkersburg Catholic do with the boys passing one way up in the air yeah. when he hit Strick, uh, Stricker for that uh, big pass. Yep. So another golden opportunity missed right there for the Titans. And it'll bring up fourth and five from the 15. So they need the ten to, to uh, the line to gain is the 10-yard line for a first down to keep the drive going. Hamrick passes intended for Elijah Facemeyer over his head. Garrett Butler was right behind yeah. him. There was three guys stacked in a... 10-yard area, which all it does is bring the defense to you. Watch here on the replay. He's looking uh, over into the corner, and you can see in about a 15-yard area, there are four blue shirts covering three. Yep. And you're throwing it into the corner, which, you know, makes it tough on your quarterback trying to thread a needle like that. So, Parkersburg Catholic coaches with the headsets off. I have a feeling that we'll uh, take a knee and go to the locker room with a 34-7 lead and that's exactly what's going to happen so the final seconds wind off the clock here in the first half as Parkersburg Catholic with a dominating performance after uh, we had a 7-7 ball game it's been all Parkersburg Catholic ever since our score at the half Catholic 34 Gilmer County Titans 7 we'll take a break and come back in a few minutes you're watching the Moran Construction High School Game of the Week on 1455media.com. Parkersburg Catholic Band is coming up. Have you heard what happened to those with curious minds? They packed up, broke free of conventions. These prospectors of knowledge are blazing a new trail, joining the long line of those who sought adventure and prepared for anything. This is the time. This is the place. Bring forth a pioneer. Hi, I'm Damien Sims. You remember me. My dad's a lawyer. He helps victims in medical malpractice. Yes, and for 30 years, I've been helping victims of medical malpractice. Let my 30 years of experience help you with your medical malpractice case. Let my dad help you. Call 304-428-5291 to contact the law offices of David A. Sims. Anytime, any place, any weather. Ramjack, a division of Moran Construction.
What about your foundation? Ramjack, a division of Moran Construction. Sir Speedy, the one-stop shop for all your printing, signage, and marketing needs. Sir Speedy's print, sign, and marketing services have you covered, whether it's banners, business cards, building signs, trade show displays, yard signs, promotional products, and so much more. With our state-of-the-art equipment, no job is too big or too small. And with Sir Speedy's online services, you can request a quote, send files, and place orders right from your desktop. Sir Speedy's got you covered. Visit us on Emerson Avenue or SirSpeedyWV.com. Merida College, it holds its students to such a high standard where it becomes the norm that you have to work hard. He actually signed me up for uh, the hardest math competition for any undergraduates in, uh, in the United States. I'm glad that he saw that in me. And this is the place that makes me feel like myself. Have you ever thought about how nice it would be to have your own private doctor? One that's available for you at any time? That's what we have to offer at Ascent Private Practice. No more waiting rooms, no random doctors. Call us, you won't be disappointed. Are you looking for a family doctor but hate the idea of another overbooked office? At our practice, you get to see the same doctor at every visit, either online or at your home. You get exceptional medical care that's convenient for you. Call us today at Ascent Private Practice. You're watching the Moran Construction Game of the Week on 1455 Sports. Brought to you in part by West Banco. By all accounts, better. Visit them today at westbanco.com. Marietta College, bring forth a pioneer. Visit marietta.edu. And by the law offices of David A. Sims, contact them at mywvlawyer.com. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, under the direction of Mr. Jeff Treadway and Assistant Director Miss Angie Stuckert and the Head Drum Major Miss Gracie Peterson, we proudly present the 2019 Crusader Marching Band.
Ladies and gentlemen, let's all move right into the class for your 2019 Corsair Monty Band. Have you heard what happened to those with curious minds? They packed up, broke free of conventions. These prospectors of knowledge are blazing a new trail, joining the long line of those who sought adventure and prepared for anything. This is the time. This is the place. Bring forth a pioneer. Hi, I'm Damien Sims. You remember me. My dad's a lawyer. He helps victims in medical malpractice. Yes, and for 30 years, I've been helping victims of medical malpractice. Let my 30 years of experience help you with your medical malpractice case. Let my dad help you. Call 304-428-5291 to contact the law offices of David A. Sims. Any time, any place, any weather. Ramjack, a division of Moran Construction. What about your foundation? Ramjack, a division of Moran Construction. Sir Speedy, the one-stop shop for all your printing, signage, and marketing needs. Sir Speedy's print, sign, and marketing services have you covered, whether it's banners, business cards, building signs, trade show displays, yard signs, promotional products, and so much more. With our state-of-the-art equipment, no job is too big or too small. And with Sir Speedy's online services, you can request a quote, send files, and place orders right from your desktop. Sir Speedy's got you covered. Visit us on Emerson Avenue or SirSpeedyWV.com. Merida College, it holds its students to such a high standard where it becomes the norm that you have to work hard. And he actually signed me up for uh, the hardest math competition for any undergraduates in, uh, in the United States. I'm glad that he saw that in me. And this is the place that makes me feel like myself. Have you ever thought about how nice it would be to have your own private doctor? One that's available for you at any time? That's what we have to offer at Ascent Private Practice. No more waiting rooms, no random doctors. Call us, you won't be disappointed. Are you looking for a family doctor but hate the idea of another overbooked office? At our practice, you get to see the same doctor at every visit, either online or at your home. You get exceptional medical care that's convenient for you. Call us today at Ascent Private Practice. You're watching the Moran Construction Game of the Week on 1455 Sports. Brought to you in part by West Banco. By all accounts, better. Visit them today at westbanco.com. Marietta College, bring forth a pioneer. Visit marietta.edu. And by the law offices of David A. Sims, contact them at mywvlawyer.com. Notre Dame 14, at the half, Mississippi State 21, Indiana 4, excuse me, Michigan State 21, Indiana 4, 14. At the half, Florida 17, Towson 0. Games later today, Kansas State at Oklahoma State, Connecticut at UCF. Mississippi State at Auburn, Ohio State at Nebraska, 
and out west, Washington State at Utah, UCLA at Arizona, Hawaii at Nevada. Ladies and gentlemen, those are up-to-date scores for today's college football. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, Penn State, a Penn Station, a proud supporter of Catholic athletics, would like to wish all student athletes a safe and successful season. Penn Station, located at 605 Grand Central Avenue, is open for both lunch and dinner, seven days a week. So if it's a quick lunch, dinner with the family, or catering for the office, Penn Station has you covered. Penn Station, a proud supporter of Parkersburg Catholic High School Athletics.
Welcome back to Stadium Field on the campus of Parkersburg High School. It's Parkersburg Catholic in Gilmer County this afternoon from uh, Stadium Field. Brian Noss, Ron Cook, we're at the half. Parkersburg Catholic leads at 34-7. to And, you know, we talked all Parkersburg Catholic in the first half, and it starts with Jeb Boyce. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's You know, if you watched any part of the first half, you knew the stats are pretty much going to all go to number 10, Jeb Boyce. And uh, when I get done reading them, you'll understand why. <laughs> He had 14 carries for 152 yards, two touchdowns. He had a punt return. I believe it was a 43-yard punt return for a mm -hmm. touchdown. Um, he had one passing touchdown. He was two of two for 55 yards. Uh, seven first downs total for Parkersburg Catholic. They had uh, um, Bruni had a few carries uh, for around 20 yards, but pretty much Boyce was your uh, workhorse. Yes. He was he was did it all. Now we talked a lot about Hamrick. We talked a lot about Hamrick in the first half. How'd he do? Um, you know, he was only six of fourteen, but I counted. I know at least six drops yeah. where it was. It, it and it wasn't even close, Brian. It was both hands on the ball and it was dropped. He should have had. He should have been close to somewhere around 12, 10 to twelve of fourteen for probably two hundred yards. Instead, he ends up he's six of fourteen. For 104 yards, he had one touchdown. Yeah. Uh, as a team, they had five first downs. And then you also, when you look on defense, you, you can't uh, – you got to talk about uh, Jalen Bruni for uh, the Crusaders. He was in the backfield uh, time after time when Hamrick was back there to pass. He was under pressure from Bruni. Uh, he blew up how many uh, option plays that they ran. He had an outstanding uh, uh, first half on defense for the Crusaders. So, some college football scores from around the nation today. Check this out. How about the Mac Brown era down in uh, Chapel Hill? As Clemson and North Carolina, 9-16 to go in the third. They are tied at 14. Mac Brown turning things around. In, in a season. Yeah. <laughs> Number uh, two, Alabama, 38-10 over Ole Miss at the half. Notre Dame trailing Virginia, 17-14. At the half, Washington leading USC 20-7, to that game in the third. Indiana, Michigan State, Spartans 21-14 at the half. Michigan, good to see them play a <laughs> high school team today. They beat Temple 52 to nothing. Rut Rutgers. Rutgers, sorry. Sorry, oh my gosh, all my owl <laughs> friends. Teddy Tackett's son, Seth Tackett works at Temple, or did work at Temple. He went to school there anyway, so I apologize for that. Holy mackerel. Uh, UMass leading Akron in the third, 20-14. to 14. Uh, Florida, Gators, number nine in the country over Towson, 17 to nothing in the uh, third. University of South Florida leading the Mustangs of SMU. Or no, I'm sorry, SMU over USF, 34 to nothing. Cincinnati, 14 to nothing on the Marshall hmm. in the first quarter. So the Thundering Herd playing at home today, not having a good go of it here so far, although Marshall did just get the ball back. Oklahoma beat Texas Tech. In Norman, 55-16. to Wisconsin defeated Northwestern, 24-15. to Iowa beat Middle Tennessee State, 48-3. to And uh, the aforementioned Michigan over Rutgers, 52 to nothing. How would the Texas A&M-Arkansas game end up? I'll tell you, A&M beat them. Squeaked it out, 31-27. to A&M, in that ball game late, get a, gets ahead of Arkansas and stays. 31-27. Big game coming up tonight, of course, uh, Ohio State and Nebraska. Everybody in the world, uh, except Dwayne Wade and Gabrielle Union, uh, <laughs> picking Ohio State. Uh, if Ohio State doesn't win by 28, I'll yeah. be surprised. Yeah. Uh, Texas Christian, by the way, over the Mad Hatter today in Kansas, 51-14, uh, to 14, less miles, not two, having fun. Two losses in a row. Yeah. Surprising. Yeah. I thought this was one game he may have a little uh, more success being at home. Well, think again. <laughs> You're watching the Moran Construction Game of the Week live from Stadium Field in Parkersburg. Tonight's uh, live stream is produced by 1455 Media. 1455 Media is a full-service multimedia firm bringing Big City, bringing, uh, bringing Big City production and small-town customer service to the Mid-Ohio Valley. Video works when it's produced by 1455 Media, and it doesn't use my voice. It works even better. Go to 1455media.com to learn more. That's the word 14. The number is 55media.com. Gilmer County set to kick it off here in the second half. John Harper has it teed up at the 40-yard line. 
Catholic won the toss beginning of the game, elected to take the second half kickoff, and that's exactly what's going to happen. Harper just angles it to the sideline and goes out of bounds. Gilmer well, County oh, trying to cover it there. Elijah Facemeyer, he didn't get there in time. He was almost there to take that in. Uh, Parker Catholic was going to get the extra five yards off the penalty going out of bounds, and it almost cost him. Yep. So it uh, will be marked at the uh, – uh, well, the penalty the flag right. is at the 42-yard line, so they'll march five, do- five, five dollars, five yards off. If he would have had, if he would have gotten that ball – while his left foot was still in bounds, that would have been Gilmore County ball. Yeah. Because it doesn't matter if it's over that white line or not as long as it hasn't touched out of bounds yet. Mm-hmm. Yep. Fisher was a little bit early on the flag there. I don't know. He Maybe he didn't see Facemeyer coming. So not like they need it, but Parkersburg Catholic has excellent field position to start the second half, first and 10 from their own 47. Brian Noss and Ron Cook. On 1455media.com's coverage of the Moran High School Construction Game of the Week, Parkersburg Catholic Crusaders against the Titans of Gilmer County. And still on his feet, a little premature on the uh, stoppage there from public address announcer Steve Taylor. Well, I like the officials let this play go. They could have blown it dead. Yeah. But uh, they gave Boyce the opportunity. It ended up, ends up costing him about another five yards, but they could have blown it dead right here. Yep. Boyce fights away from three guys and then goes down. Another, well, it was actually about uh, five yards further back. So, And once again, Justin Lou, you are not going to bring down Jeb Boyce with your <laughs> arms. It just ain't going to happen. And yet when you're going up high on him and you give him the opportunity where he can put that hand in your chest mm-hmm. and push you off of him, yeah, you're not going to bring him down. You've got to go around the waist and – Lasso down to the legs. That's the only way you're going to stop him. Do the Kurt Angle angle lock or something. <laughs> you got to, you got to get him. Flag on the play as uh, Dean Brannon, the back judge, throws the flag and calls delay of game. Delay of game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Second down. So uh, big loss back to the 35. Incidentally, on that uh, prior play. So it's going to be. Second and now 22 after the five-yard delay of game penalty. And the end around. Here comes Ethan Lang. Lang down the sideline. He's still in bounds. Ethan Lang has a step on the defender, and Ethan Lang is going to go 65 yards. Touchdown, Parkersburg Catholic. And just like that, Ron. Yeah, and they had Boyce running out of the Wildcat. And probably most of the guys on Gilmer, including me, thought he was going to keep the ball. They were using the reverse as a uh, decoy. But uh, watch on the replay right here. He gives it away, and you can see a couple of guys going with him. And after they realize who has the ball, and that's Lang going down the sideline. Does a real good job staying in bounds. And then right here, slipping out of that tackle and taking it into the end zone. Face Meyer, the only chance at him, and uh, he just couldn't catch him. You know what that's called, Ron? What's that? Trick <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> when that happens. Two point conversion now from Parkersburg Catholic. And I think they're saying he did not get into the end zone. No, I did not see a signal. Did not. And Boyce's run for the extra point is no good. So your score with 10 minutes and 51 seconds left in the third quarter. So that took a minute and nine seconds. Look at it again here. And replay, yeah. Direct snap. He just, no, he was brought down just shy of the goal line. Moss coming in off the corner, linebacker, and bringing him down. That's the way you got to tackle him. Started at the hips and went down to the legs. There's a good look right there at uh, Ian Hamrick. He has got a quaff, doesn't he? He does. (laughs) Now, I could grow, like, behind his ears back. I could grow that. Could you? On top of the head, yeah. Yeah. Those days are gone. Game of the week brought to you by Moran Construction. Moran Construction and Ramjack of West Virginia. They're your local foundation repair experts. Give them a call. 740-444-4773 or visit ramjack.com. Appreciate Ramjack being with yeah. us all season. Our title sponsor. Jody Bonnet and her team up there do a just a great job. So Gilmer County right now down by 33 points. Speaking of great job. 
Yes. The Parkersburg Catholic Athletic Director supplying us with water. Yes. Supplying me with water. Yeah. In this second half. And uh, appreciate that. Yeah. It's uh, we had uh, Chris Wells, the uh, athletic director at Ritchie County, did a real good job. Oh. Welcoming us. Yeah. Getting us in there, making sure we had everything we needed. And Amanda, Amanda Weatherwax, the athletic director for Parkersburg Catholic, doing yeah. the same thing, Thank greeting you, us today, making sure we had. Damon Dobbins gets him out of bounds. Also Gardner, or I'm sorry, Gardner. And I like Garvin. that I've seen, we saw Garrett Butler a couple of times just take the ball and go down with it. Yeah. Yeah, you're a wide receiver. You got some moves, you got some speed. When you get the ball, run with it. Mm-hmm. See what you can get. And he does a good job that time. Getting it into uh, Catholics into the field at the 45-yard line. Stefan Garvin. We talked earlier about coming from the long line of Garvins and Colliers and Collie. I mean Collies. Uh, never ending. First and ten for the Titans. Their first possession of the second half. Hamrick pitches the ball and it's on the ground. But it's recovered by Kyle Moss. Moss, I think, was looking up field, Ron, and didn't really get a handle yeah. on that pitch. Moss should have brought that ball in. You can see it. it's just a hair behind him, but it's enough. He got both hands on it. And his you eyes were take up that field. In. Yeah. Yeah, good call by you seeing that. How about that, huh? And uh, Every blind a, squirrel finds a nut. How, <laughs> how many times have we seen that, whether it's, you know, taking in a pitch, taking in a pass, mm-hmm. a punt? Whatever, you take your eyes off the ball, bad things are going to happen. You know, I want to give props to uh, Joel Stoffel, number 51 of Parkersburg Catholic. Not only did he play the first entire half, he's the trumpet lead trumpet player in the band. So he played a whole halftime show, and now he's back out there taking a, uh, a breather on the sideline as the pass is intended for Elijah Facemeyer, and he hits him in the hands, and he can't hold it, uh, bring it in. I mean, uh, his defense, he was a little out in front of him. Watch it uh, right here on the yeah, uh, but on the replay. you know it's another one where got to have that get, man. Yeah, got to lay have out it. and get that. You've got to help your quarterback out. You know, I had so many drops this afternoon. Yeah, and it, you just think if they would have caught, you know, six of them that hit him in the hands that should have been caught, you, we may be looking at a different game. There was one of them that was going to be a touchdown. <laughs> he was five yards behind the defense yeah. for Catholic and in and out of the hands. Back to my love for uh, Joel Stroffel, uh playing <laughs> the entire first half and then playing in the band at halftime. And uh, now uh, getting a breather on the sideline, but uh, pulling uh, double duty today is is uh, the uh, senior, 6'4", 260-pound senior and lead trumpet player. He had uh, pregame national anthem yep. and then uh, the halftime show. Yep. And, uh, yeah, I wonder if he's going to get time and a half. I should know. I don't know. That nice run by uh, Hamrick is going to be called back with a hold. He'd picked up eight yards on that carry, but it's going to take it back. One thing we haven't seen today, Ron, is a lot of laundry yeah. on the field. Yeah, it's yeah, been a pretty clean game. Yeah, Watch that. here on the replay as Hamrick goes around. The left side. It's going to be right about where he's taken the down. Ten yard penalty. Up foul. Third so down. They caught Facemeyer coming across the the uh, the uh, the middle of the field. Yeah. Now what? I don't know that I saw the hold, but I didn't either. Um, but the official did. That's what counts. Yeah. <laughs> and so that moves them back. It's going to be third down. Doesn't matter what you and I see. Forty to seven is our score. Parkersburg Catholic over the Gilmer County Titans. Hamrick wants to throw over the middle, has a man caught. And with the catch is Levi Self. He gets some of that yardage back across the 40 to about the 40 and a half. Now 42 yard lines will they mark it. Yeah, he's going to be a couple of yards short. It should look like it should have been up at the uh, 46 uh, yard line. Mm-hmm. And then he gets pushed back. But it's a, a lot better situation now. It's going to be fourth down and about uh, three yards. Yeah. Yeah, the line to gain is the 35. Ball uh, just inside the 38-yard line. So, I mean, obviously you're down 33 points. You're going for everything here. So, um, hammer, shotgun, straight pass, and it's just going to be over his head. It's over Kyle Moss's head. Yeah, that was just a mistake right there, putting putting the ball up too high. 
that's one you need to put out in a hurry, get it to your receiver so they can pick up that three yards you need. And you can watch right here as he gets out. That's you got to put that on the line because if yeah. you even if he catches that, he's going to have trouble picking up the first down because Dexter was right there on defense for uh, the Crusaders. You know that's one of those things like um, like in a baseball play where the, a ball's hit back to the pitcher and you have all day long to make that throw and then you just ooh, it's yeah. like <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that's you why know. you see a lot of pitchers go towards first base and yeah. toss an underhand. Right. <clears throat> Boy, speaking of uh, baseball, you know, Marty Marty Brenneman uh, doing his last game in Cincinnati uh, on Thursday. Uh, boy, end of a end of an era there, man. Marty yeah. Brenneman, just uh, a legend, obviously. Yeah. I mean, and then last night in Pittsburgh, Steve Blass, the uh, longtime broadcaster uh, and pitcher for the Pirates. He's one of the few guys still alive that played with Roberto Clemente. I remember that 71 series he oh. was in. What a series he had. Jumping into the arms of Bob Robertson after that yeah. uh, final out. But they honored Steve Blass last night. It was his last televised game. I think he'll do radio tonight and tomorrow. Or tonight and, uh, yeah, and tomorrow. But uh, Pirates walking off in the bottom of the ninth against the Reds on Steve Blass' last television broadcast. Um uh, Kevin Newman hits one out, and Pirates beat the Reds last night. Pretty cool. Yeah, back when Blast was playing, that was a big-time rivalry, two of the top horses in the National League. They hated Cincinnati each other. Cincinnati and Pittsburgh, yeah. And they don't much like each other now. <laughs> I mean, all the beanball and stuff that goes on <laughs> between those two ball clubs every year, they're not, uh, they're not real happy with each other. Second and five now. At the 45-yard line, Jeb Boyce, the ball carrier, he'll score it across the 25, down to the uh, 20, uh, or rather 35, down to the 34-yard line. First down, Crusaders. And you see Boyce doing a good job running the read option there, keeps it, comes around the corner, and he does that because he's got a blocker out there on the defensive end. That was Ethan Lang. Mm -hmm. He's got Lang on the cover man on the corner. He keeps the ball and picks up 11 yards and a first down. 7-17 on a running clock. In the third, Brian Noss, Ron Cook bringing you the Moran Construction High School Game of the Week on 1455 Media. Jalen Bruni, the big brute, 210-62 and a senior. Straight ahead over the left tackle. And he uh, gets ahead for a few. Second down. Bring up second down and seven. They'll give him three on the carry. That's the direction he knows well. Straight ahead on offense. More south, man. Yeah, straight to the quarterback on defense. Yeah. Just tell him where to go, and he's good at getting there. Yeah. For sure. Whistle blew just a little bit early on that. He would have had to pick up a five, but mm -hmm. they blew the, blew the play dead. Yep. And uh, he only ends up only picking up three. Catholic two wide receiver split wide to the right. to give to Boyce right up the middle. Jeb Boyce. And Jeb Boyce is going to go basically untouched. Yeah. It's just great blocking in the middle of that offense for Parkersburg Catholic. 31-yard touchdown run for Boyce. And on this drive, he has over 50 yards on three carries. Wow. I mean, I don't think anybody got a hand on him, do yeah. you? Well, maybe right there. We I mean, see, Butler. Wait, wait smartly, the tackle he went upfield and was looking for somebody to block there was no one there yeah and uh voice just coasts into the end zone after he gets through the line of scrimmage so pending the extra point it is 46 to 7 now and clayton dexter can't get it to go through so our score, 6-19 to go in the third, 46-7 to in favor of Parkersburg Catholic. Marietta Health and Wellness is the chiropractic care specialist for the Marietta Pioneers. Located only a half a block from campus, providing chi chiropractic, physical therapy, and massage therapy for the college community. Whether you're a student athlete or educator or administrator at the college, they've got your back. Close, convenient, caring staff, same-day appointments are available. Proud to be a part of the Marietta College Internship Program. Go Pioneers. That's the folks at Marietta Health and Wellness Chiropractic Center. Pretty cool. I like to play on words. They, like have, they have your back. They have your back. <laughs> yeah, they have your back. 
one literally of my, and figuratively. Yeah, one of my favorite uh, one of my favorite people in the whole world uh, is a chiropractor. His license plate, back doc. Uh, it's, you know, <laughs> it's that, you know, just let everybody know who he is. So finally, some relief for the boys on the field. We've got cloud cover, and uh, it doesn't look like it's going to be anything serious. But uh, just uh, the sun's not going to be hitting them for a few minutes now, anyway. Marshall still trailing in their ball game against the Bearcats, 14 to nothing. Doc Holliday better light a fire down there in Huntington today. You don't want to, you don't want to take a step back in a game that you probably should be very competitive in. Kyle Moss with the turn, and boy, what a stiff arm he put on one of the uh, Catholic defenders. I believe that was Braden Ayers, and he caught him right under the chops and put him down on the ground. Watch on the replay right here. Wow. <laughs> That's a pretty good stiff arm. He rolls away from that and returns the ball out to the 49-yard line. Good job by I wasn't, Kyle Moss, a junior. I wasn't paying attention. Did you say there's a cloud now? Yeah. Isn't yeah. Can you, can you oh. not see it? My word. <laughs> it dropped 10 degrees here in the last 30 minutes, 30 seconds. <laughs> Ian Hamrick, shotgun, keeps it, rolls around to the left, across the 50, and he is planted. Hamrick, the ball carrier. Yeah, he was trying to make a cut back inside. He couldn't go around to the sideline, and is taken down after a gain of three. Jeb Boyce on the stop for Parkersburg Catholic, and uh, Coach Binniger is going to give him a rest as he comes out of the game. You know, substitution. Hamrick, only a sophomore, he he really looks good throwing the ball. Mm -hmm. Looks confident back in the pocket when he gets uh, gets set up back there. Yeah. When he runs the option, he needs work on that. Yeah. He's only a sophomore, though. Right. Yeah, he'll learn. Nice. Uh, End around there, Kyle Moss on the carry. First down yardage for the Titans. Good positive offensive play there. Good job by the right side of that line. Getting a nice hole for Moss to run through. Watch here, it's just a little misdirection. He's going to be led up in the hole by Lou. Lou puts on a nice block up field and picks up the first down for the Titans. Hamrick in the shotgun, two sidecars, left and right, and they're going to give it again. Is uh, Moss the ball carrier? Moss, Moss the ball carrier. Down to almost the 36-yard line. He's a half yard short. Jalen Bruni again beating his block to the inside, down cracking down and bringing down the ball carrier after a gain of a one. Second down. Clock continuing to tick here. Now, is it uh, – you'll have to refresh my memory of uh, WBSSAC or uh, NFHS rules. In the fourth quarter, if the lead is how many points do we have a continuous clock? Um, I'm going to hope it, it's at least uh, 39. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, there's – we Well, you pick. Was it offsides or or was it well, uh, motion? It was one sure. of the two because it was like they both left at the same time. Uh, I think Lee myself be, ran one heck of a yeah. route, I can tell you that. <laughs> and was wide open yeah. at the end. Unfortunately, the whistle had blown. I think that's going to go against Gilmer. I think he was the first one to move. Number 12 on the offense. They're going to get Levi Self for running the best route of his career. <laughs> right then and there. I mean, it might be a penalty, but it still makes the highlight tape. Yeah. So that'll be second down and 14 after the it's penalty's like, marked off. It's like, you remember uh, when uh, the Steelers center got injured a couple of weeks ago and they brought the backup center in? And the whole team <laughs> moved, and he never snapped the ball. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Boy, the Steelers are hurting 0-3 this year. Good night. And uh, Hamrick's going to get wrapped up and dropped for a loss. Bruni and uh, – And Fur actually did a good job blocking that time. He was pushing Bruni to the outside. Watch on the replay. He rides him to the outside. Quarterback cuts up underneath, and he just rolls off. He sees that. Fur can't see that, but what's happening behind him. Mm -hmm. He's thinking he's going to ride him up behind the quarterback. The quarterback cut underneath, and Bruni makes the uh, tackle for loss. Clock continues to roll here. 3.35 and running. 
to go in the third. Catholic all over the Titans. Gilmer County, and Gilmer is not going to want to remember the Titans after this one. It uh, has not been pretty. Hammer looks to throw, gets hit as he throws, pass is caught. Nice job there by Justin Liu. Went up between two defenders and pulled it in. And Hamrick just now getting up back at the 44-yard line. He was drilled, Ron. Yeah, he had pressure in the backfield. He got away uh, from Bruni. But you watch right here on the end when he sets up to pass, he's going to get hit right as he throws it. But, hey, you look at that catch. Lou, the ball was behind him. Yeah. I don't know if it was intended for him or for Chapman. But uh, you may want to switch Lou out to receiver because he can hang on to the ball. Yeah. yeah Big he, pickup. He didn't even start on offense today. He's a, your right outside linebacker to start things. But uh, Lou, nice reception right there. They'll give the ball off to Moss, reverses his field, and barely inside the 10. Moss doing a good job just to pick up positive yardage on that because he was stopped in the backfield and had to cut back inside. We've got a cramp. He's got a cramp he's trying to stretch out. Mm -hmm. But you look right here, cutting back inside of who? Bruni. Bruni. Who did a good job. That's what you want your defensive end to do, turn that play back into the defense, and he did just that. Mm -hmm. And about a yard and a half pickup for Moss on the play. Jeb Boyce coming back in now for Parkersburg Catholic, and he's going to replace Stephen Nguyen as Nguyen gets a breather. Hamrick wants to pitch. Now he'll hold it, go right up the middle, and Ian Hamrick from 10 yards out gets the touchdown for Gilmer County, and they put six more on the board. Good for them. Yeah, nice job by Hamrick. Reads. The play back to the inside. You can see the pitch man is covered. And he, instead of taking it up over the tackle, he cuts it right back up in behind his left guard and takes it in the end zone. I was talking about his option skills. I guess he showed me, shut me up. Shut you right up. <laughs> John Harper out of the uh, hold of Garrett Butler. Gilmer will go for the extra point right here. As soon as Justin Liu gets set. Now he's ready. Kick is up. It is right down the middle. So with 2.04 to go in the third, Parkersburg Catholic 46, and Gilmer attacks seven more on the board since their first possession, mind you, of the day. Yeah. I want to remind you also that Tim Nolan of Nolan Services would like, to, uh, like you to meet his superhero and grandson, Decker. He's a two-year-old boy who's uh, bravely battling hypoplastic right heart syndrome, which means he was born with just half a heart. So he got home from the hospital from his fourth open heart surgery. He's supported and loved by his dad, Zach Nolan, who's an assistant coach for uh, the Parkersburg High School Big Reds, his mom, Brittany, and the greatest big brother in the world, Benny. Log on to Facebook and search Team Decker to support our favorite superhero, Decker. Love you, kid. That last drive for Gilmer. Hamrick was two of three passing for 52 yards. Look at you and keeping he stats. Capped it, yeah, he capped it off with uh, an 11-yard touchdown run. And uh, Gilmer still playing with pride, down 46-14. But, uh, yeah, that's one thing you want to see as a coach. you got a young team. It's it, They're down by a lot, down by 39 in, in the third quarter. Still a long way to go. It's hot out, but they're not quitting. They're right. still giving it They're still giving it their effort out there, so yep. that's good to see. Love that. That will pay off in years to come for this young team. Yeah, and speaking of years to come, you know, you, talked to, you and I talked before we even went on the air. These kids are set up for the future, I oh, think. Oh, yeah. You know, if Absolutely. they stick with it, uh, the, this, this Gilmer County team, only uh, three seniors we counted, three juniors, and that's it. So, And then when you look at the passing abilities of Hamrick, I mean, you come in with a young quarterback like that, you expect, you know, to see erratic passing, maybe not as strong as an arm. But this, guy, this kid's got a good future. Parkersburg Catholic, incidentally, 12 se 11 seniors on this team. Wow. Yeah. Wow. We better hope there's some uh, kids coming up. Yes, they need to do some uh, reloading. Dare I say recruiting. <laughs> you said it. Not me. <laughs> Strong eye and the pitch out 
to Boyce. He'll take it on a hop, and Jeb Boyce run out of bounds at the 30. And that pitch was just kind of like from uh, Dexter. It was yoiks and away, and it hit the ground and bounced right to uh, Jeb Boyce. Yeah. Good lead blocking out there. Watch on the replay. Bruni's out in front of him. He'll get on Lou and seal that corner. But right there, an excellent job by Boyce just to get on it. And then you see Bruni with the block there that gives him the corner. Told and you he's he ran out of bounds after a he played gain baseball. of 22. I told you that, right? I told you that, right? Yes, you did. Okay. Yeah, you would know. You get to see a lot of local talent on the baseball field. Yeah, well, not as much as I used to, but I still uh, I still get my, uh, my fair share. Jalen Bruni over the right tackle. Picks up about a yard and a half on the play. Second down and eight and a half, we'll call it. Eight. Scoreboard says nine. Nice look. You can see some of the dark clouds that have finally cleared over yeah. the stadium and the sun is back out. Mm -hmm. Clayton Dexter. Haven't uh, haven't talked a lot about his passing skills today because we really haven't had to. Yeah, yeah. Well, when you have Boyce. Uh, yeah. he's, <laughs> and Bruni, the yeah. way Bruni's running yeah. the football. Bruni's the hammer and Boyce is the guy that gets to the outside and up the field. But in case you, uh, you, know, you missed what we were talking about in the first half, as you see, Boyce going to uh, get down inside the 10. We were talking in the first half. Xavier Colley, the regular quarterback for uh, Lance Benninger's Crusaders, uh, was injured last game uh, and is still nursing that left leg. And so uh, they have turned to Clayton Dexter, yeah. the senior, to uh, run the offense. Yeah, and he's done a good job, you know, of course, Get it to number 10. Yep. Makes your job a lot easier. But, uh, you know, that was a nice pitch out there that time to uh, hit Boyce in stride as he hit the corner. Mm -hmm. Ball down to the six-yard line, first and goal for the Crusaders. So Dexter will lead him to the line. Logan Ayers. And they give it to the big man. Still on his feet, powering towards the end zone. And they're going to call him down at like the half yard line. Yeah. Where the pile just kept moving and moving. Good job by the big guys up front for Parkersburg Catholic. Was that Bruni on the carry? I think. Second and goal for the Sayers. Yeah. Yes. On a tight goal line. Yeah, he was, uh, he was trying to get in, but uh, Gilmore County was doing everything they could to keep him out, and they just brought him down short. So. He says, uh, you know what, give it to me again. I didn't get in that time. I'll get in this time. And Jalen Bruni from a yard out gets into the end zone, and Parkersburg Catholic increases their lead. And, uh, boy, that kid, you know, um, if you're Lance Benninger, you hate to see him go because he's a senior, um, 6'2", 210 pounds, yeah. and he is a workhorse. Man, look at that. He is just put together. This half, Boyce has had – Six carries for 93 yards. In the half? In the half. Wow. Well, actually in the quarter because yeah, we're yeah. not out of the third quarter yet. Yeah, yeah he's, his last three carries have been for 31, 22, and 22 yards. It's easy to stack up yardage that way. Yep. And uh, Clayton Dexter with the extra point out of the hold of Jeb Boyce. 15.2 seconds to go. In the third, Parkersburg Catholic 53, Gilmer County Titans 14. We'll keep it right here as we uh, get ready for uh, the fourth quarter coming up. Again, not real sure of that rule. I wish I could remember. Um, but um, we uh, have a yeah. second here, so I want to do uh, look and see how your favorite uh, football team is doing. How about that Clemson score? Any in, change? In the fourth quarter. 14 to 14. Still. Still. You know, uh, quarterback for uh, Clemson. Um, Call him Sunshine. I know. <laughs> yeah, you know. like off of Remember the yeah, Titans. Yeah, uh, He's maybe having a sophomore slump. He, has, he oh. wasn't as sharp as he was last year. He went from like, uh, uh, I, was, I saw this this morning, he went from like a 4 to 1 odds to win the Heisman. Now he's over 50 to 1. Mm -hmm. He has really dropped off. Uh, but, yeah, four, uh, fourth quarter, 12.34 to go in the ballgame. Clemson, North Carolina, nodded at 14. 
Alabama having their way with uh, Ole Miss, 45-17 in the third. Uh, Notre Dame ahead of Virginia, uh, 21-17 in the third. USC trailing Washington, 28-14 in the third. Michigan State over the Indiana Hoosiers, 21-17. Uh, we were checking on that Marshall score uh, earlier, and Cincinnati now leading Marshall 21 to nothing in Huntington with 6.50 to go in the second. So Thundering Herd having all kinds of trouble with the Bearcats today. Oklahoma beat Texas Tech 55-16 to earlier today as Gilmer... Gets the ball across midfield. Nice return by Chapman. Yeah, Avery Chapman. Picked the ball up on a run. Gets it to the 47-yard line of Parkersburg Catholic. So, uh, you know, I don't know if you follow the uh, PGA Tour. Not much. Okay. You know who Tony Romo is. Yeah. Well, Tony Romo tried to uh, qualify uh, for the weekend for the Safeway Open out in Napa Valley, mm -hmm. California. Missed the cut. Did he? He was two under on the first day. I mean, he was there. Yeah. Right? But he had a bad second day, so he missed the cut. So Tony Romo will be uh, joining Jim Nance in the booth tomorrow <laughs> instead of playing golf. I've, I've seen him on those pro-ams. He looks good. You know, he, he is good. I'll tell you who else is good, too, as uh, Hamrick is thrown for a huge Bruni. loss. Bruni? Bruni's good? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Steph Curry is good. Yeah. That's the end of the third quarter. Our score, Catholic 53, Gilmer 14. We'll take a break. We're coming right back. 1455 media's coverage of the Moran Construction Game of the Week. Anytime, any place, any weather. Ramjack, a division of Moran Construction. What about your foundation? Ramjack, a division of Moran Construction. You're watching the Moran Construction Game of the Week on 1455 Sports. Brought to you in part by West Banco. By all accounts, better. Visit them today at westbanco.com. Marietta College, bring forth a pioneer. Visit marietta.edu. And by the law offices of David A. Sims, contact them at mywvlawyer.com. My question is if you get David Sims as an attorney, mm -hmm. and David is a great attorney, mm -hmm. does his son come with it? I mean, is it a package deal? Because his son does the coolest <laughs> television commercials <laughs> I have ever seen. I mean, his son has got it going on. So I, I think he's going to go into acting uh, as a career instead of an attorney. Well, I mean, either way, it's lucrative, right? I mean, <laughs> you, know, you can make some money as an attorney. You can make some money as an actor. But, no, David Sims, uh, a huge, huge friend of 1455 yes. Media. And we can't thank him enough for all of his support. And I know uh, Mitch Owen and Troy Duvall, the uh, co-owners of 1455 Media, could not have done this endeavor without David Sims. Um, so we appreciate David very, very much, and his little boy as well. Hamrick, long pass intended for Levi Self, and he just uh, overthrew his receiver. Logan Ayers in coverage, and, and Catholic has done a better job getting their defenders back in coverage. Guess what? Clock's running. On an incomplete pass, so our question is answered. Yeah. So we will run a continuous clock. We don't know what the exact number is. But we know that uh, it's qualified. Yeah, it's somewhere <laughs> around 35 yeah. points, somewhere in that region. And I think it has to be in the fourth quarter. And um, uh, I think they'll stop the clock on change of possession. But um, other than that, it's it's going to run. Yeah. Hamrick doing a good job that time. He dropped the snap, just picked it up, got his eyes downfield looking for his receiver. But it was good coverage by Catholic that time. Hamburg wants to keep it this time, and he does. Over the right side, he gets out to the 39-yard line, a gain of two on the play. So it will bring up fourth down and a bunch. Yeah. Line to gain is the 37-yard line. Still a good breeze blowing right now. It's going to be to Gilmer's advantage. So now a high punt 
You want to put that punt as high as you can. Let that wind carry it downfield. Stricker will be deep to take the punt for Parkersburg Catholic. Fourth and 22. And the snap is over his head. This is going to be bad for the Titans as right there, Johnny on the spot. Steven Newwin. Yep. Got him. Takes him down, and Parkersburg Catholic is going to have great field position. Nice play for the senior right there. He had a beat on him. There's Newen right there. Good job by the senior. So the ball spotted at the 21-yard line. Boyce has 245 yards on the game. See if they want to put him up to a 300. That was right. Change possession. Clock stops. Yeah. Yeah. Good call. Thanks. Stations of Seven Ranges Radio have you covered this high school football season. Next Friday, October 4th, Light Rock 93R has Williamstown at, oh boy, Williamstown at St. Mary's. That's a rivalry. V96.9 has Parkersburg South at Huntington. And 92.3 WXCR will be covering Tyler Consolidated at Webster County. Cover starts on all stations at 6 p.m. With countdown to kick off. All those seven ranges radio stations are everywhere. There is a lot of games of interest. All three games that they have. You got the Williamstown St. Mary's game. Uh, I mean, they're big rivals. You've got South at Huntington. You'll see. We'll see how good South is yep. when they play Huntington. And then you've got Webster County coming to Tyler, and that's going to be a game of interest for not just them, but Ritchie County. They play Webster County later in the season. They will come to Ritchie County and yep. play. So that's going to be a, a see how good Webster County is for this year. But I like your analogy. We'll see how good uh, Parkersburg South yeah. is next week when yep. they have to go on the road two hours and 20-some minutes. And they're facing a legit team in Huntington. Yep. Yeah, that's uh, Billy Seals has done a good job turning that program around. Mm-hmm. In Huntington, they they were down for a few years, but uh, he has brought them back, yeah. and they are a state contender, seems like, every year. Made it to the uh, Super 6 uh, what, four or five years ago. Yeah. Uh, didn't come away with a win, but uh, nevertheless, we're able to get there. Well, you know, that Martinsburg train continues to roll, yeah. and ain't nobody going to derail that thing. I don't care what you they, do. Dave Walker has got them firing on all cylinders. Huntington South Charleston last night, you talk about a big one, 52-50. to 50. Yeah. Highlanders pull it out at home. So you may see another big offensive game with Huntington and Parkersburg South. Yeah. And uh, handoff. Got another ball carrier. Right up the middle is the the Eli Gardner, I believe, yeah. number three, getting his first carry of the night or afternoon. Good hole to run through yeah. and picks up eight. Justin Liu on the uh, wrap-up tackle right there. Second and, oh, we'll call it a uh, long two. So you can see some of the bench players on offense are getting into the ball game. Mm-hmm. And off right up the middle again is going to go to Eli Gardner. And Gardner, close to first down yardage. Although they'll say he's just a hair short. Bruni is on the sideline now. He's he's had a full game on offense and defense. Yeah. Carried the ball several times. Lead blocking for uh, Boyce. And then also uh, had a big game on defense. Boyce is on the sideline. Getting the rest. Of, yeah, how, how can you not be satisfied with 245 yeah. yards? Wow. You know, it'd be nice to get 300, but uh, you don't want to rub it in. Nope. And after uh, after second thought, on second thought, the uh, the uh, Crusaders get a first down here on this uh, drive. And the ball's on the ground. Dexter immediately covers it right up, bounced right back to him, actually. It was a good job by Dexter just picking up the ball, moving forward. There's a good look at uh, Jeb Boyce right there. Has had a big game on offense. Yeah, I reckon he may be done for the day. Yeah. Although, you know, they may put him in on defense, but uh, he's had quite the day. You said 245 yards. 20, yeah, 20 carries for 245 yards. Wow. You do the math. It's uh, no, I'm, I'm, what, about 10 yards a carry. I'm not that very good at math, <laughs> but I'll take your word for it. Eli Gardner, ball carrier across the 10 now. To the uh, nine-yard line. 14, 14 yards of carry, 12, 
it's four. somewhere around there. It's a lot. All right, dang it. <laughs> Get out the calculator. You said 245 yards on 20 carries? Yep. Right? All right, 12 and a half. 12 and a quarter carry uh, there you yards go. a carry. 12.2 yards a carry. 2.5. I was doing that West Virginia math in yeah, my head. I hear you. I got you. All those seconds spent on the homework has paid off. <laughs> Clock running here in the fourth quarter, 6.42 to go in the ball game. Pitch over the right side, and again, the ball carrier is Eli Gardner. He's getting a – wait a minute, was that – Stricker, that's number Stricker. two. Sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry. Nick Stricker, the uh, senior, 5'8", 135. Nice run around the end there, my yeah, bad. Getting some good blocks to the corner. You can see he's trying to get to that corner to head up field, but – Gilmer doing a good job. There's Moss out there with Erlewine, and they finally just uh, pin him to the sideline and take him out of bounds yeah. at the three-yard line. You know, we commented before the game how difficult those numbers are to see on Parkersburg Catholic's jerseys because they're dark numbers on dark jerseys. Yeah. Which is the outline. There's just a white outline. So yeah. um, Ritchie County was the same way. Yeah. And then so and then you commented on how bad your eyes were, and then I seconded <laughs> how bad my eyes were. So we're we're in deep deep trouble yeah. all day today trying to uh, figure out, uh, you know, who's doing what. That was Gardner. Yep. Right up the middle and into the end zone. Yeah, and you know the thing about it is, the further away you get from the field, the worse it is. Nice job by the offense opening up. First, getting the push back because yeah. he wasn't hit until the one yard line. The scrimmage right. line was three, and. Uh, and you know you can't get much further in a high school stadium than where we are today. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, about the only high school stadium we're going to be further away is at Laidley. Laidley. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you're up a lot higher. Well, we've done some games there, haven't oh, we? Oh yeah. Dexter on the guy. Back in the day. Yeah. There the are several times. Boyce. Clayton Dexter out of the hold of uh, Jeb Boyce at the ten yard line. Nice uh, high Dexter kick. Splits the uprights. I like Dexter's approach. It's just a one step and kick the ball. Don Cockle. Get it off. Yeah, get it off in a hurry. You don't care how far it goes, just go between the uprights. Love that Don Cocker off straight on kind of thing. Yes. Hey, Marietta Health and Wellness is the chiropractic care specialist for the Marietta Pioneers. They're located a half a block from campus, providing chiropractic and physical therapy and massage therapy for the college community. Now, whether you're a student athlete, educator, administrator at the college, doesn't matter, they've got your back. Close, convenient, and caring staff. Same-day appointments are available. Proud to be a part of the Marietta College Internship Program. Go Pioneers. That's our friends at Marietta Health and Wellness Center. 60 to 14. 542 to go in the ball game. And uh, the Crusaders coming up. Uh, they were at 500 on the season. They really needed this win. Yeah. Gilmer probably needed it more to get back to 500. But... Uh, yeah, Parkersburg Catholic getting back above 500, two and three on the season. And if they can – six and four does not guarantee you in single no, A no. a spot in the playoffs. It's usually you've got to be at seven and three. Or better. Yeah, to get in the playoffs. You know, we talked, though, it, I love to see the fact that um, that Gilmer is still, uh, you know, still working hard at it and still fighting this afternoon. You know, they just put points on the board there a couple of drives ago. And, yeah. uh, you know, so – Really admire the heart of uh, Tom Coger's team here uh, from uh, Gilmer County because they are uh, they're giving it everything they have right now today. It's just it's really just too much Parkersburg Catholic, too much Jeb Boyce as Avery Chapman takes the kickoff up across the 40 yard line. They'll mark it down at the 42, and uh, they'll take over first and 10 at their own 42. And you know, coming out in the second half, we talked about uh, Jagger for how he'd had a rough first half going up against. Uh, um, Jeb, uh, Jalen Fury. Fury. But uh, he has played a better second half. Yeah. I like the coaching adjustments Gilmer has made. Fur, it's not Furry. Or, yeah, sorry. Furry's that wide receiver's yeah. coach for the Chicago Bears. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jalen Bruni. I uh, I think the heat's getting to me. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you know, I, I've liked some of the adjustments they've made. It's just Parkersburg Catholic's just been – overwhelming for uh, new quarterback uh, for Gilmer County now that's John Harper and uh, new ball carrier is Cadence Miller freshman wearing number 51 actually I think that wasn't that uh, 
Don't, Jagger, t- don't tell me I was wrong. Was I wrong? I think it was 57. Oh, it's uh, Fur. Okay. Fur was the ball carrier. I knew it was a 50-something. Yeah. Because he what, he used to be the uh, fullback, and mm. then they moved him to the offensive to, line. Yeah. And now he is back in the backfield, 57. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 57, 51. It's easy. I can see where you can make that mistake. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> so Harper... New quarterback, and they're uh, they're going to give uh, Hamrick the rest of the day off. And John Harper, the junior, gets ahead out to the 49-yard line, crosses midfield to bring up third and one. Yeah. Watch here on the replay. Just taking it straight up behind the left guard. Nice spin move there. Yeah. Nice run to bring up a third and short situation for the Titans. Just under the four-minute mark to go in the ball game. Yeah, but you look at the future for for Gilmer, and it's it's right. Yeah, it is. It looks good for them, uh, with all the sophomores they have on the team. They've even got a freshman that's uh, that's uh, playing. So you know, look for them to make some noise next year, and the year after that. wasn't too long ago they had a perfect regular season. They yeah. went ten and zero, and went into the playoffs uh, with some hopes of getting Wheeling. Didn't make it there, but uh, uh, yeah, wasn't too long ago. Right. Justin Liu, the ball carrier there, uh, close to first down yardage, but no Seagar. He's going to be about a half a football short. Uh, line to gain is the 48-yard line, and they're at the uh, 47 and a half, so fourth and a short one for the Titans. Clock continues to move here as uh, we are coming down to three minutes to go in the ball game right about now. So movement on the line, the question is, was the defense drawn or did the offense move? We'll see what the call is. I think it was the offense. Had two guys had the wrong snap count. Yep, you're right. All start. Offense, five-yard penalty remains fourth down. And the clock even continues to run during a penalty in this situation. So uh, You notice today we haven't been given the number of the offending player on the penalty. Once in a while they have. But not every time. It hasn't been consistent. You're right. Fewer and far between. And I'm sure the players appreciate that. I know I would. <laughs> I mean, just think, uh, every, if they threw a flag on us every time we made a oh mistake, my gosh. the game would go till midnight. Yeah. And then they'd never have us back. <laughs> Harper looking for somebody to throw it to and can't find anybody, so he keeps it himself on his feet. Nice job there by John Harper. First down, Titans, down to the 36-yard line. Did a great job, pressured in the backfield, was just looking to throw the ball, and then he sees an opening right about now, and he takes off and takes advantage of it, picks up a first down, makes a real nice move on the linebacker there, and takes it to the 35-yard line. 16 yards on the pickup for John Harper. Nice job there. Hammer getting a well-deserved break at quarterback today. He uh, did a really, really good job. Did that? Uh, did that little sophomore? Ian Hamrick, six foot one sixty-five, the uh, quarterback uh, that handled the duties most of the day today. Nice to see uh, Thomas Coger giving his junior some experience. John Harper. Hamrick ended up the game. Eight of 18. I counted six drops. I mean, that yeah. were legit in the yeah. hand. Should have been caught. Yeah. Six drops for 100. He finished with 156 yards. Nice. And a touchdown. Nice and he day. also had an 11-yard touchdown run. Yeah. Inside a minute now as the clock has continued to run because of the lead uh, in this ball game. And uh, ball carrier is... Well, I give up. I couldn't saw it. I see now it was fur, right? I believe so. Yeah. Jagger. With a name like Jagger, it's got to be Fur. And we have, we don't have to run another play if they don't want to. No. But we'll see. But, I mean, you know, Gilmer If I was to. Gilmer, go for the end zone. Yeah, what do you got yeah. to lose? That's right. You better believe it. Don't forget next week, uh, Ron and company on the road in Ravenswood as the uh, Rebels will travel oh, okay. down to Flynn Stadium. Fur, Jagger Fur, the ball carrier down to the 10-yard line. That'll be the last 
play of the game. Nice effort there trying to get the ball in the end zone in the last play. Our final score, Parkersburg Catholic 60 and the Gilmer County Titans 14. I mentioned next week, Ron, Cook, and company. Don't know who your partner will be, but I'm sure it'll be somebody better than me, and they will, you will be down in uh, Ravenswood. West Virginia as uh, Ritchie County makes the trip down I-77. Yeah, should be a good game. It's uh, got a lot riding on it for both teams. Uh, Ritchie County coming off their uh, first loss of the season on Thursday, so you never want to get back into the win column. Our thanks to all of our sponsors here this afternoon from 1455 Media. Our thanks to the hospitality of the staff of Parkersburg Catholic High School. Our final score, Crusaders 60, Titans 14. For Ron Cook and the entire crew, here at 1455 Media, I'm Brian Noss. Have a great evening, everybody.